Bulls Unlimited, your 24-7 home for USF sports. The first pitch is about to be delivered. Tomahawk toward left field. That's heading toward the gap. And that one clears the fence. We're moments away from the start of today's USF baseball game. Going to have to hurry up to get to this one. And he makes the catch. With a call of the action, here's Jim Lauk and Derek Sharp. And the Bulls looking to make it two wins in a row, 14 and 16 on the season. Bethune Cookman trying to shake off a midweek loss to Stetson last night, but again, they had won four games in a row before that getting a sweep against Savannah State. Played that game in Sanford. They played 22 games in a row this season at home. Why wouldn't anyone not want to come to Daytona? So I guess that was the benefit of that part of their schedule. But leading things off, a guy who has really surged as the season has gone on, the redshirt junior, Justin Heron. Then Brady Van Hook, who has gotten more and more relied upon this season. He's a 238 hitter. No homers, five RBIs, by the way. Heron, the 271, had a huge home run and a walk-off victory in that earlier series uh, this year. We'll tell you more about that. The guy who's really solid is their shortstop, Nate Staraszewski. He's the best hitter. 326, two homers, and 10 RBIs. Over Torres is the number four hitter today, hitting 226. He's got a homer and 18 ribbies. Brandon Wilkes, who we might see out of the pen. He's kind of a two-way player who's become more of that this year than ever in his career. 319. Joseph Fernando, 323, three homers, 17 RBI among the team leaders in all of those categories. Danny Rodriguez, he's had a stellar career but is struggling this year. Still a dangerous hitter in the seventh spot. Then Chase DeBonis, kid from Steinbrenner, is their catcher and hitting eighth. And Khalil Smith. Trying to find out a player along with just one other on the team, that would be Fernando, who's played every single game this year, Zach Spivey, why he's not in the lineup tonight, but he is not. And Richie Cruz will start things off for the Bulls and starts it off with one of his patented sliders a little bit low in the zone to Justin Heron, and we are underway. Richie Cruz, 1-1 one one on the season with a stellar ERA, 1.66, 13 appearances, 21 and two-thirds innings, 16 strikeouts to five walks, and sometimes have midweek starters that might have issues with the walks. His consistency across the plate is something to behold. And there's a nice inside strike one and one. I tell you what, Jim, it is great to be back behind home plate. The UCF setup is a little off to the left, still close to the action, but you just really appreciate being able to see what's in and out on the plate. That's a chopper to Bellow at third base, a sharp throw across the diamond, and there's one away. Changes your whole perspective when you're not lined up the way we are. We really have it good here. Well, with football, I know you called every USF football game, and there's a stadium here and there that you're not in the middle. <laughs> I can't there's imagine. a lot of them, really? actually. Yeah. Was it so Soldier Field that was a little off, off to the side for yeah, you? Yeah, there are some when you're down as far as the 20-yard line, and it can uh, make it tough seeing the far end of the field. Absolutely, on the scoring opportunity. Richie Cruz starts off the lefty. Brady Van Hook with a fastball outside. Good take there by Van Hook. They just have the one lefty in the lineup facing Richie Cruz, so he should have the advantage with that slider tailing away and down. There's a perfect pitch on the outside corner by Cruz. He's not going to hump it up there much beyond 85 miles an hour. That was 81, but great location, one and one. Bulls wearing their sharp white jerseys with the numbers and gold trim. Cruz throws the slider outside, two and one. Boone Cookman going with the dark jerseys, black jerseys with the gold numbers and the red trim. These say Wildcats on them, their home jerseys. I remember just said Cookman, which I'd never seen actually. There's a ground or two. Second, and what do you know, two ground balls by Richie Cruz. Jordan Santos fields it cleanly for a quick second out. Starting lineups have been posted in Gainesville for USF softball. They go against Florida at the top of the hour, and Georgina Korik will pitch for the Bulls against the Gators tonight. That is a game that we will be keeping you informed about for certain, and that is something that I wanted to really keep notes on because Georgina Korik, face it, they've had great pitching from Nicole Doyle, but gives the Bulls the best chance to win. It sounds like Ken Erickson's going to really try and concentrate on winning that game, which would be huge for the Bulls. Baseball team here, quick getting two quick outs on ground balls by Richie Cruz, and he starts off Nate Staraszewski with a slider, a perfect low portion of the zone, 0-1. Cruz working quickly, Staraszewski taps that one, but that's going to go foul, 0-2. Yeah, um, 
you know, the Bulls have, they go right from Gainesville to Orlando, and Cordrick's been the person that goes Friday, Sunday, every single series, and you would have thought and understood if Erickson had maybe not started her tonight, but there's a chance that they split duties, Cordrick and Doyle, eventually. So we'll certainly be following that game for you here. 0-2, oh two, two outs. Tyler Dietrich sets up outside. Cruz hits the target with a fastball right at 85, but it is outside 1-2. and two. Good crowd here. Starting to settle into their seats. The crowd in the stands mostly in shape, which is good. Field mostly in bright sunshine. Ooh, can he check up on that slider? He cannot. Staraszewski strikes out. Richie Cruz gets the 1K, and a very appreciated by his team already, I'm sure. Quick first inning. We go to the bottom half. No score, Bulls and Bethune-Cookman. This is baseball, the USF Radio Network, presented by Marathon. Make it count when driving. Make it count when flying. Make it count when traveling. Make it count when giving back. It's Make It Count Rewards for Marathon. You earn points every time you fill up or make select purchases at Marathon. You save on gas, airfare, hotels, or support the environment. It's easy to sign up. Text JOIN to 40244. So what should you do right now? Sign up and make it count. Marathon, fueling the American spirit. Manly man. Emily Motor Oil tips its hat to the manly man. Manly man. You one time wrestled a bear for 50 bucks. Manly man. You always order the Lumberjack breakfast. Manly man, man, man. And you know that nothing protects your engine better than Emily Elixir Full Synthetic Motor Oil. Family owned and Tampa Bay grown. A-M-A-L-I-E. Better than it has to be. Emily. Emily Motor Oil. Proud sponsor Manly of USF man, Athletics. Man, man. USF Baseball on the USF Radio Network. Presented by Marathon. Bulls fans, when the Bulls win, you win with Papa John's Pizza. This season, get 50% off your regular menu price online order at papajohns.com the day after the Bulls win. Use online promo code USFWINS. Papa John's Pizza is the official pizza of USF Athletics. Better ingredients, better pizza, papajohns.com. So a little bit of a tweak to the lineup. Same nine that played on, well, Saturday and Sunday's game, now that I think about it. But Kyle Phillips will be leading things off, hitting 320. As Jim mentioned, two homers, 19 RBIs. Then Jake Sullivan moves up for the first time into the two spot. He's hitting 277. Jordan Santos, the usual leadoff man, drops to the three spot, 248, and two homers with 21 RBIs. First pitch from Isaac Gutierrez, who the Bulls are imminently used to seeing, is low, 1-0. Joe Genoa will be clean up tonight. Then Austin Pedrado, Tyler D. Chris Chatfield, then Nick Gonzalez, and Alex Bella. 1-0 pitch right down the heart. 83-mile-an-hour fastball. Phillips looking all the way, one and one. Talked to him yesterday for the Bulls Beat podcast, really engaging kid. Dribbles that one's going to try and beat out the first baseman to the ball, but that's going to be a tough race to win. And Rodriguez just scoops it up for the first out. Weak contact there. Rodriguez, the easy play, three unassisted. Van Hook is the left fielder. Heron, very good outfielder in center. Over Torres, good range over and right. The two-way player, Brandon Wilkes, is the third baseman. Staraszewski moved to shortstop last year and has locked it down ever since. Joseph Fernando, not Fernando Joseph. Good luck that we get that every single time right. Is the second baseman, and Rodriguez is the first baseman. The kid from Steinbrenner Jonas is the catcher. A couple of Tampa area catchers by trade, although Jake Sullivan has been playing mostly DH of late. Face off here behind around home plate. Sullivan looks at a ball. Low, that's a strike on the outside corner, one and one. Gutierrez, two and two with a 3-2-1 ERA, good numbers. Gave them a nice outing his last time. In fact, came on in relief to win a game the other day, a wild game. Can't hold off on the change up there. Sullivan swings and misses, one and two. But he has pitched against the Bulls as a starter the last two games in Daytona. He came out of the pen here last year. And and a mixed results. Last year, the Bulls touched him up for seven runs, scored 16 in the game. This year, he kept them down into the sixth inning. The bonus sets up outside on that one and two pitch, but it's low, two and two. It was a five nothing game, I'm sorry, three nothing game until the six when the Bulls tied it up and eventually beat the Wildcats in Daytona a few weeks ago. Bounces in that two and two pitch, so it's three and two. 
This is one of those times when the batter is standing in bright sunlight, seeing that ball come out of shade at home plate. It's not the easiest time to hit right now. <laughs> it is not. And it's really the only guy in shade is the pitcher right now. Sullivan saw that one pretty well, fouled it off, though. 84 mile an hour, 3-2. and two. We had all sorts of weather in Orlando, much less the sunshade situation, but any shade on Sunday. It's starting to be that time of year. Full count, one out, and Sullivan takes the ball inside. Well there for a walk with one away. Sullivan's done a good job drawing walks too, especially for a pretty young guy. That's his 10th in just 65 at-bats. And his on-base numbers are just steadily improving of late. It's going to put him around the 400 mark. And the guy who Led the charge there with the walks. He has slowed his walk pace, if that's the right thing to say, but Jordan Santos certainly has impressed. They throw it over to first base, get Sullivan back. Jake has not attempted a stolen base this year. Would be surprised to see him go. Obviously, the Wildcats are keeping an eye on him. Jordan Santos from the left-hand side. Looks at a ball on the outside corner, 1-0. So mentioned that the Bulls will leave town early tomorrow to get into New Orleans comfortably in time. And it's going to be a pivotal series for many reasons that we kind of hinted at already. 1 0. Well outside. Gutierrez struggling a little bit right now. 2 0. Just because the Bulls have put themselves in that situation, losing two of their three, all of their three series, and getting swept in one, that they've got to start winning series just to get the record up, but also to get out of ninth place, which is where they are. Outside, nice framing effort there by DeBonis, but it's 3-0. That's a perfect example of really appreciating our setup here at the USF Baseball Stadium because if I'm calling that one from the side, I'm thinking it's a strike, but it was outside by a, a good couple of inches. 3-0, taken all the way is Santos, the man who likes to walk, and it's a good slider for strike one, 3-1. and one. Joe Janord on deck. I would venture to say that Bethune Cookman will be careful Pitching to him as he hit that. They go back over to first. No worries there for Sullivan. Not only hit that blast against UCF on Sunday, but hit the game winning homer against Bethune Cookman in the first meeting between these teams. And it was actually longer and deeper than the one he hit against UCF by a long way. So what Santos taking again, high strike, three and two. So Joe better get ready. If do see him on deck, assuming no double play here. And, uh, look at some off-speed stuff. Gutierrez has been mixing up speeds pretty well. Third throw over to first base. Still three and two. Boone Cookman, 13 and 21, six and six, and the MEAC runner is going. Santos is hitting it, and it's going to be a fair ball off the first baseman's glove. Pops high into the air. There was a little bit of a hesitation there by Sullivan. Wasn't sure how it took place at first, but he looks up, gets to third, and the Bulls have runners on the corners after the base hit by Jordan Santos. That ball just beat up the first baseman, Danny Rodriguez, banged off his glove and went into medium deep right field. So even with the hesitation to make sure it got through, Sullivan had plenty of time to get to third. Well hit ball and really one of those things where somehow the first baseman had scooped it. He Probably could have just stepped on first and then tried to get the tag with the runner, but it did eat him up. And now Joe Janord, as Boom Cookman has no place to put him necessarily. There's an off-speed pitch, and it's a little high in the zone, 1-0. and guessing Joe's going to see a couple of those here today. Just underway, after a quick 1-2-3 inning turned in by Richie Cruz, the Bulls have runners on the corners here with one out in the bottom half. No score yet throw over to first base to try and catch Santos leaning. Three for six on steal attempts. And Cookman has some good stolen base numbers, but they haven't had anyone on yet. Bluffing over there, Santos in a curve. It's the zone one and one. Off-speed stuff, pretty much a 50-50 mix here from Gutierrez. In his 28 innings, 24 walks, 13, I'm sorry, 24 strikeouts and 13 walks. For a fifth time, he throws over to first base. I'm sure it would appear.
tease Mr. Gutierrez if he could somehow get a free out there, especially with the man he's having to face right now. Joe Genoward, one and one. Gutierrez really in the shade now and gets a fastball by Genoward. Swings and misses, one and two. Got the look of a pitch that Joe might be able to handle, but just missed it. He was hitting some shots in batting practice. Over the wall, one and two. Oh, there's another shot, but he pulls it. Foul. Got a little bit too in front of it. Joe is hitting 349, nine homers, 28 RBI everything you want him to. Struck out 20 times decent numbers for him in that category as well. Flies that one. Don't think it's going to be deep. In fact, it's going to stay in the infield for Staroshevsky. Looks like it might be getting into shallow left, but it's not going to advance the runners at all two away. So it's going to come uh, down to Austin Bedrado now with runners on first and third. Good job there by Gutierrez of keep it on the outside part of the plate and Genoa just missed it again. So unable to time up Gutierrez in this case. Gutierrez, a guy that you heard Billy Bull say that he's not wanting Richie Cruz to go for. Gutierrez is a candidate to go for five innings if he's pitching well. Starts off the lefty Pedrado with a curveball. Hits the outside corner. 0-1. Really want to see Austin put it in play here. He has had a lot of strikeouts this season. But when he gets it in play, he hits the ball hard, and he's had some great moments. Sure has, and yeah, the strikeout totals have gone up on him lately, and most of them have been looking. So we'll see, like you say, comes up swinging at something close to the zone. 0-1, runner bluffs, and that ball is a tough one to take, but Pedrado does. It's outside, 1-1. One one. Have a Dietrich on deck. Auto hitting 267 on the season. It was kind of a toss up at the beginning between he and uh, the other new Bulls, Brandon Shrepp, but Pedrado has settled into the lineup every day. Shrepp more scant, but also more out of the pen. Pedrado skies that one. The Bulls hope it gets out of play. It will as Chase DeBonis gives it a courtesy run, but it's going to bounce out of play. Two and two, though, or one and two, though. Now to Pedrado. Landed right by one of our videographers for the YouTube broadcast. Putting himself out there, going to give it to a kid. Nice work there. Now, now hit zoom. <laughs> Focus. <laughs> what it do? Pedrado chops it. If he's going to speed it out, there's a chance to beat it out, but he can't quite do it there. As the pitcher Gutierrez gets to that tapper, jumped off the mound, and Austin Pedrado grounds out. One to three to end the inning. Bulls get nothing. They did have one hit in the inning. They leave two runners on base. We head to the second. No score yet. This is baseball on the USF Radio Network presented by Marathon. Best tailgate? It's got to be burgers. And an ice cold Coke. Real football. Y pollo asado. Mac and cheese. You need a hot grill. And an ice cold Coke. Of course. Football and Coke. Come on. It's got to be Coke. Game day? Race day. Calls for Coke. You know it. It's tailgate 101. This is Charlie Strong. Not all fans agree on the best game day foods, but when it's served with an ice cold Coca-Cola, you know you've got yourself a winner. Coca-Cola. Taste the feeling. Grab one and go for it. Florida Blue Centers around the state offer answers to your health insurance questions face-to-face. -face. Come in for a health assessment, talk with a nurse, or try a fitness class. It's the place to go for inspiration, motivation, and advice right in your neighborhood. Florida Blue is committed to helping people and communities achieve better health. Visit your local Florida Blue Center because better health starts here. USF Baseball on the USF Radio Network, presented by Marathon. Derek Sharp, Jim Lauk here on a midweek contest. The Bulls looking to make it a season sweep. This is the first of the six, by my count. Of course, my count could always be a little bit off, but six season series, if you will, that end up being home and away when it comes to in-state teams. They'll play one home, one away. As a matter of fact, of the six, 
Only two of them featured the first game here at USF Baseball Stadium, so they're enjoying a lot of return trips, including this one, allowing them to stay at home in the middle of the week, not have to take those bus trips. They kind of got those out of the way, a lot of them anyway, early in the season. They still have to go to FGCU. They still have to go to the University of Florida, which stands as a pretty big situation later on in the season. But North Florida will be here next midweek. They'll also play Stetson and Jacksonville down the road. Those are the four teams that they've already visited this year. And the midweek games could be very, very important as Richie Cruz starts off. Ovetter Torres with a nice pitch on the outside corner. 0 and 1 had a quick first inning, did Cruz. Torres fouls that one off, hitting 226 on the season. One homer, 18 RBI. like to walk that much. 29 strikeouts and 7 walks, so Cruz is pretty safe to flirt with the corners of the zone. 0-2 oh after that one's fouled off. That's a good slider that Torres barely chops to extend the at-bat 0-2. Oh Midweek games. That could be a little off, but I believe there are not uh, non-conference games. There are nine left, including a series next weekend, but the way it's setting up schedule-wise, Cruz tries to get Torres to chase with that outside pitch. One and two here starting off the second inning. Bulls playing the Citadel next weekend at home. Those nine games, I figure the way things are adding up, and that's a great pitch by Cruz. A slider dipping away from Torres, and he swings on it and misses. Second strikeout for Cruz. Even if the Bulls were to win the rest of their conference series, you're going to have to sweep one of those to finish above 500 in the league, so you just do the math on that. In order to have any sort of at-large hopes, you pretty much have to go 8-1 and one in the nine le remaining non-conference games. I don't know how that's going to all play out, but it just gives you an idea of kind of what this start to the season, 14-16, and 16, and it's set up for them to have to try and accomplish in the last part of the season. Starting off with an inside pitch there, ball to a good hitter, Brandon Wilkes. Cruz now falls behind for the first time, 2-0. Wilkes, a redshirt senior, hitting 319 at a spruce, spruce Creek. Again, he is going to be a guy that we could see pitch as well in this game. And he hits that ball really well to left field. Chris Chatfield gets a good jump on it and makes the catch. Wow, that was no sure thing. Chris Chatfield made that play look a lot easier than it looked off the bat, and there's two away. Yeah, it was tough also because the ball never got very high. And Chatfield really had to react very quickly to it and just barely had enough room in front of the warning track. Great, great speed on display there by Chris Chatfield, who it's been wonderful to see over the last just few days, granted, but really improved in a lot of areas and earned the playing time tonight for certain. Faking a bunt attempt there and looking at it instead for a strike is Joseph Fernando, another senior. They've got a lot of seniors in this starting lineup five of them, but a redshirt senior, Zach Spivey, for the first time all year, not in the lineup tonight. Let's see if I see him over there. Is it jersey number one. Maybe he's just getting the night off. One and one. Bill Cookman, of course, trying to get into the NCAA tournament via the MEAC. That's something they did a couple years ago. And the Bulls saw them, and they had an incredible run at the Gainesville Regional. Good off-speed pitch by Cruz. Swung on a miss by Fernando, one and two. Two outs, top of the second. Cruz looking good so far, although that one's poked into right. Looks like it's gonna drop for the base hit. <laughs> it absolutely was poked and it stopped out there. It was like a golf shot that wasn't going any further than it did, but it's a base hit in the first of the night for the Wildcats. So Fernando came into the night second on the team in batting average and that's probably gonna Put him right for the team lead. Incidentally, Spivey, the bat that's not in the lineup. It's a 2440 here, 244 hitter with 12 RBI. So now it's going to bring up Danny Rodriguez. Don't worry about him getting hot. He's just hitting 202 this year with one homers, and he flares that one off to right out of play. But his first three seasons, good play by a fan on the Karen there in the stands. This batter right here, the big right hander, Rodriguez. 10 homers, 11 homers, and 8 homers. So he's got the power back. 
He is, I believe, in about his 20th year as an active player with Bethune-Cookman. <laughs> it just feels like I've been doing games where he's played forever. And I'm, it's only my second year, and he kind of gives off that vibe, so I know what you mean. Look at that ball low and away, one and one. Jonathan Hernandez, on the other hand, is their first-year head coach. First, last four years at ASA College in Miami. Very familiar with that program, I'll be honest. There's a one and one pitch, drifting outside a little bit high in the zone, two and one. Keep an eye on anyone that gets on base with the possibility of stealing a base. Fernando is the most likely of them, 10 for 10. We certainly are aware of that. Wants to get a jump there, but stays put on that two and one pitch just outside, barely missing for Cruz, and now it's three and one. Careful here. When we come to over the plate, the guy that can uncork the ball on you. On deck hitter hitting below 200 is Chase to bonus. Three and one. Our own first stays put. And yeah, that was careful. Cruz points to himself and says, Yep, that got away from me. And there's a walk. Two runners on for the Wildcats. So now the aforementioned Chase to bonus. Chase. Junior out of Steinbrenner hitting 192 on the season. Two homers. One of them came against the Bulls, and it ended a long dry spell for a bonus of three weeks. He had gotten a hit in each of their first three games of the year and then went three weeks without getting one but hit one out against the Bulls. So you want to carry on that memory. And he's been hitting a lot better of lately. At late, his batting average was below 100 at that time, so he's really turned it around. First and second, two out. Cruz starts him off with a nice fastball with that diving action on the outside part of the plate, 0-1. Good little league presence here tonight. Not quite as many little leaguers as was at that softball game on Sunday from what I heard and gather. What a great environment that was. And there's a chopped grounder to short. Gonzalez scoops it and then throws over to second to Santos for the force out. Fielder's choice goes six to four, and Richie Cruz gets out of the damage or potential damage there. No runs, one hit, no errors. One ended up being left on base. We go to the bottom of the second. No score yet, USF and Bethune-Cookman. This is baseball on the USF Radio Network presented by Marathon. Hey, Bulls fans, Ron Diaz here. And if you need to sell your home for the most money in the fastest time frame, the only names you need to remember are the Duncan Duo at REMAX, proud partners of USF. The Duncan Duo can give you an instant cash offer for your home or guarantee to sell your home in 29 days or they will buy it. Trust the agents that have thousands of five-star reviews and have sold over $1 billion worth of real estate. Go to DuncanDuo.com or call or text 813-359-8990 today. FIFA Brady's two for 20. Now with steak and even more options to love. Pick a starter to share, then choose two entrees like our new choice cut sirloin. All for 20 bucks. FIFA Brady's two for 20. What will you choose? Don't have an ordinary Monday. Have a burger Monday at Beefo Brady's. Stacked high with fresh Angus and fries, just $5.99 all day. Beefo Brady's Burger Mondays. Nobody out beefs beefs. Pricing may vary. USF Baseball on the USF Radio Network, presented by Marathon. The crisis averted there by Richie Cruz, and both teams now have stranded a, well, cut, gotten a couple runners on base and ended up not scoring. The fielder's choice, yeah, that's right. Both runners were left on base technically there as the batter got to first, but to no avail. Tyler Dietrich comes up here in the bottom of the second. You want to talk about a guy that it doesn't always reflect in the numbers. You look at his batting average, it's 250, but he has been hitting the ball well of late, and you can just tell that Billy Moe wants to keep him in the lineup. It's back to the he's catching every day days. He could get a night off, but it's been a while. He looks at a outside strike there. Good pitch by Isaac Gutierrez. Going one through 25 pitches in that first inning to Gutierrez, and the fact that Bethune Cookman has someone warming in the pen. Trust me, is a good sign for the Bulls. Let's see if they can work that pitch count a little bit more. One and one. 
and he swings and misses at a curveball on it. A doozy one and two. And just the opposite now. The mound is in sunlight and home plate is in shadow. Positions reversed from inning number one. Hit the ball up the middle. Yeah, just like that, but it gets past it. The pitcher to the shortstop, an underhanded throw, kind of a slick play there by Staraszewski. And it's one away. Staraszewski, very solid shortstop and a good fielder there. Gets Dietrich. So it'll be Chris Chatfield. I mentioned that he had a wonderful weekend, at least two games worth. Again, his numbers aren't going to show it just yet because of where they were, but to get him continually up is something that Chatfield's on the pace of right now. Looks at a change up high in the zone on the strike side of it, 0-1. Chatfield's got that head sticking out of the sun, though. Body in the shade, kind of interesting. Right there on the cusp. 1-1 one one to him as that fastball dips low in the zone. Again, we'll be monitoring the USF softball team as well on this Wednesday playing the University of Florida here as that falls outside, two and one to Chris Chatfield. Bulls taking on the Boone Cookman Wildcats. Had a wild couple of series since these teams have played each other. Chatfield misses that off speed pitch, two and two. They had a, in addition to some this crazy stuff that happened in some series, I'll mention some of the things later on, but a midweek game where Heron, the kid that's leading off tonight, Justin Heron, Mentioned he has one home run. It was a walk-off homer to beat Stetson. But after that, they got swept by NCA&T, swept at Wichita where they just couldn't score any runs. But then four wins in a row snapped last night. Chatfield hits that ball well, and sure enough, trying to stick the glove out in the sun, knocks it down to himself, does Gutierrez, and that's going to be an out at first base as his throw was high. But somehow Rodriguez kept it in the area of his glove and it landed just at the right moment for out number two. Yeah, I thought he bobbled that ball. I really thought Chatfield was going to be called safe on that, but called out instead. A nice recovery by Gutierrez and Rodriguez. A big stretch to take a very fast throw from close range from Gutierrez. That was all sorts of hanging on by a thread out number two. Pull it off, though. Nothing comfortable about that for Bethune-Cookman. Another hard-hit ball by Chatfield, which, again, is good to see. Nick Gonzalez, he's been making a lot of contact of late. Looks at ball one. Two away, bottom to second, no score. Bulls and Wildcats. Gutierrez paints the outside corner with that fastball. One and one. And Gutierrez has faced the Bulls each of the last two seasons. A real slow change up, and it was... I guess a little bit low, 76 miles an hour, two and one. Isaac spelled I-S-A-A-K. See a lot of pitchers wearing number six. Pass ball outside corner, good location. It's the second time he's done that here to Gonzalez, two and two. He's a junior out of Norwalk, California. Any Californians come to play baseball with Ben Cookman, that's an inside strike. Beautiful first strike out of the game to end the inning by Gutierrez. I have to save my story about how most of their softball team is from California, as I recall. But the California kid off to a good start here for Bethune. Cookman, as we head to the third, still nothing doing on the scoreboard. This is baseball on the USF Radio Network, presented by Marathon. At Tampa Electric, we believe that conserving energy and saving money is something you should know about because knowledge is power. That's why we want you to know that with Tampa Electric's Energy Planner, you can control when and how electricity is being used in your home. It's a free, smart home automation program that lets you save energy and money. And that's just plain smart. To learn more and sign up for Energy Planner, visit tampaelectric.com save. Tampa Electric, more power to you. When it comes to cancer, defense isn't always the right strategy. You have to be willing to go on the offensive to attack it relentlessly like Moffitt Cancer Center, standing up to it with the same courage Moffitt sees in every cancer patient they treat. That's why Moffitt is working every day to outsmart cancer, not just to react to it, but to get ahead of it, which is the best way to win. To see stories of courage, visit moffitt.org slash courage. Moffitt, a proud partner of the USF Bulls. 
USF Baseball on the USF Radio Network, presented by Marathon. Get all the latest USF clothing and gifts featuring the complete line of Adidas Coaches gear. The USF Bookstore is open seven days a week on the USF campus, or you can shop online anytime at usouthfloridabookstore.com. U, the, le the letter U, that is, usouthfloridabookstore.com. As you all know, it's birthday week for Derek Sharp. My birthday is tomorrow. My wife's fully aware of the Adidas gear. I've gotten so many great Adidas polos and shirts and running shorts. It's really, if you're a runner, you can't go wrong with the Adidas running shorts. So you don't have to worry about getting me any gifts from there. But for anybody else, it is a great idea. I don't know, uh, Jim, I know that I think all stated goal was not to stretch Richie Cruz out too much, but I think as long as he's throwing a shutout, he might stay out there tonight. Well, only 30 pitches also, so I think they're they're going to settle on three innings here. That would be the question, three or four, but he's looking really good right now and facing the number nine hitter in the order. Will Smith starts him off with a fastball called strike the outside corner. Mentioned Zach Spivey has started every game. Will Smith has started zero games. This is his first start for the freshman, so this is, as he chops that one foul, 0-2, the decided change to the lineup. And if you're wondering, is he a freshman from around the Tampa Bay area? Nope, Southfield, Michigan. So, big time tweak to the lineup here from the Bethune Cookman side of things. Smith takes that one outside, 0-1. He got on, got in as a defensive replacement late in the first meeting between the teams. Test my memory back score in a second. Oh, Cruz slider that had Smith fooled. He just hoped it was high and outside, and it was. Two and two. So Khalil Smith, a 250 hitter. Again, just though eight games played and just four at-bats. So when I say 250, he's got one hit. And that's not going to be a hit. He chops it foul. Stays two and two. Leading off the third inning. No score yet. Both teams have had threats in this game, getting two runners on base. Bulls had first and third in the first inning with Joe Gennard up, but he had a weak fly ball, and that was it for that threat, and that's it for Mr. Smith as Richie Cruz gets him on the slider away. Strikeout number three, and we go back to the top of the order. Man who talked about the heroics hitting the walk-off homer against Stetson, and again, that was before they got swept by North Carolina A&T, which is the favorite to win that conference. And that ended their 22 game, as far as home streak games played there in Daytona. Aaron fouls that one off to the right-hand side. Looking around, seeing a couple members of the soccer team over there. I think they are getting some spring action in. It's not just baseball and softball. A lot of teams playing that ball is chopped over Alex Bello. It, third base and that is going to be extra bases for the speedy Heron. He gets to second so quickly with a double and positioning was the key there. That ball didn't exactly get pounded but it just had that right chop hop to get over Bellow for a hit. Got a nice high bounce coming off the ground in front of home plate. Didn't hit it hard at all and this will be the first time that a runner has been in scoring position since Fernando in the second. Johnston Heron is six double. Gets him out there, and he is a threat to steal, though. Got a good hitter here, and Brady Van Hook, at least the guy who's been hitting the ball well lately. Let's see if they put the bat in his hands here. One out. Aaron out there at second base, and great pitch to start Cruz on the outside corner to Van Hook for a called strike one. Oh, they, they put a ball up on the scoreboard. I thought that was a strike. My mistake. Want to know? We'll go with that. Still a good pitch on the outside corner, just barely outside. Cruz stares back at Heron, and there's a called strike. One and one. Underway in Gainesville, Corrick versus Barnhill. Those two pitchers have combined this year <laughs> for 37 wins and 378 strikeouts. 37 wins is quite a tidy number. I know Barnhill's third in the country in strikeouts. That is going to be some situation. That ball's hit pretty well, and Santos can't field it. Out to Pedrado. He bobbles it. That's going to allow the run to score. And the bethune Cookman Wildcats and an RBI single by Brady Van Hook have a 1-0 lead. 
ball was hit very sharply, and even though it was skittering along the ground, I'm not sure Santos saw it very well, looking into the sun, and that ball just kind of got past him, definitely a base hit, but I think on an overcast day, Jordan might have had a, a better angle on that. No doubt. It was uh, the sun staring him right in the face there. It was so hard hit that, that he probably didn't see it right off the bat. Again, it was coming out of the shade, and that's really the first time today that we've seen maybe an impact with the conditions here in the sunlight. Billy Mole comes out to talk to Richie Cruz, runner at first base. One of their top hitters, if not their top hitter, Nate Staraszewski, comes up to hit here. And this is stalling for time a little bit. The Bulls are getting a right-hander ready now. And again, it's not so much of a case of Cruz necessarily getting hit hard, but with some base runners now, he's up to 41 pitches and probably get near the limit for tonight. Sereshevsky, first time up, struck out one of two in a row that Richie Cruz summoned. It would be nice if he could summon one right now. And Cookman has a 1-0 lead. Just take, took that. Runner is going in Van Hook, and a good peg, but it gets away from Gonzalez, who tried, I'm sorry, Santos, who tried, tried to make the tag on the back side, would have had the out. But the contact, I think, knocked the ball out of the glove for Santos. Well, the problem there was Christopher Tipton, the third base umpire, who was moving to second to make the call on the play, and he never saw the throw. I don't know if it was coming out of the sun or not, but it was going right toward his head, mm -hmm. and he ducked out of the way at the last minute, and I'm not sure Santos saw that ball because of it being between him and the umpire. Good observation there. It was a, not where you'd normally want a throw to be by Dietrich, but if it lands in the glove, where that glove was was on the backside of Van Hook, but it's working out right now for the Wildcats. It was a strike. Now another running runner in scoring position. That slider is low, one and one. Tereshevsky, 10 RBI on the season. 276 with runners in scoring position you get it rolling like the Wildcats have it. It tends to become contagious. They put up a lot of runs last weekend against Savannah State. The 16-hit game, Cruz. Off-speed pitch, beauty on the inside corner, called strike one and two. Van Hook had two hits in that game and two more, or three more in the next game, so he's really swinging a hot bat. This guy's just been the steady one, Nate Staraszewski again. 323 on the season. He's behind at the count. One run in for the Wildcats to lead one nothing top of the third. One and two, one out runner at second base, and that ball is skied high. Santos going out. Phillips coming in. It'll be caught by the second baseman Santos. Runner has to stay put two away. Phillips, incidentally, as I mentioned, I interviewed him yesterday, solved the whole mystery of the why he was wearing jersey number 40 with the black jerseys. And I just assumed it was because uh, the 40 jerseys showcased his, showcased his biceps better. He said, nope, the one worked, but I just left it, on, <laughs> left it at home. <laughs> so he's back to wearing number one. Actually, it changed jerseys mid-game because they resumed it on Sunday. They just kept their greens on that whole day, of course. Now it's two away, and Richie Cruz hoping to keep the score where it is, one nothing going to end up being right as far as three innings being the limit. Cruz wants to limit the damage here. Starts off with a ball low to Torres, who struck out his first time up. Over Torres, spelled like over. Which is Spanish pronunciation. And he taps that one over to third base. It's one and one. The pitcher who was getting limber as far as an arm situation in the Bethune Cookman Wildcats bullpen is now just sort of doing some stretching so Gutierrez has sort of settled things down on that end for a midweek start one nothing in the third inning could be a worse situation of course the Bulls going to start getting some runs oh that it started inside ended up on the inside corner and Torres was swinging on top of it the whole way it wanted to be nice offering there from Cruz not going to blow the fastball by you. When he does throw the fastball, he's aiming for the corners. Everything else is sideways and slurving down. That was a 
perfect example of a pitch that Cruz likes to deliver. One and two to Torres. And there's another one. He swings on it and misses. Strikeout, number four on the day, number two against Torres. And Bethune Cookman has to settle for just one run. They get one run on two hits. No errors, one left on base. We head to the bottom of the third. It's Bethune Cookman 1, USF 0. This is baseball, the USF Radio Network, presented by Marathon. Make it count when driving. Make it count when flying. Make it count when traveling. Make it count when giving back. It's Make It Count Rewards for Marathon. You earn points every time you fill up or make select purchases at Marathon. You save on gas, airfare, hotels, or support the environment. It's easy to sign up. Text JOIN to 40244. So what should you do right now? Sign up and make it count. Marathon, fueling the American spirit. Hello, I'm attorney Robert Rubenstein, and this is Rubenstein's Rules for Personal Injury. Rule number eight, demand the best service. You're entitled to it. Rubenstein Law cares about you. Our team is dedicated to providing the best legal experience during this difficult period. Cases do take time to get you the result you deserve, but we work diligently on those cases. Keep in touch with you and return your phone calls as quickly as possible. Call Rubenstein Law at 1-800-FL-LEGAL. Offices in Tampa and throughout Florida. USF Baseball on the USF Radio Network. Presented by Marathon. Derek Sharp, Jim Lauk in Tampa. Bulls will be spending all of next week back here, but will be headed on a plane to New Orleans first, a second plane trip of the season. Me selfishly just thinking about how my travel plans have gone. I was not with the team for its previous and still only plane trip of the year. That was second weekend of the season at North Carolina. Bulls were swept in that one, all close games. Well, i got to say I'm a little bit surprised Bethune-Cookman has made a change at pitcher, but indeed they have. As Isaac Gutierrez was comfortable in that second inning, a 1-2-3 inning, but I guess this was the plan all along. So it could be a bullpen night for Bethune-Cookman. Kid coming in throwing hard out of the pen right now is Brian Melendez, a junior. He's from Coral Gables High School, but he played over at Lakeland CC the last couple of seasons, and a guy that the Bulls didn't see the first time. So, Melendez, just by watching the lefty warm up, he's got some heat behind that fastball, and now Alex Bello will come to the plate, having never seen the starting pitcher, Isaac Gutierrez, who departs after two scoreless innings. One of the Bulls were timing him up just a little bit. Bella looks at a fastball, 80 miles an hour. Maybe took a little bit off it. So Melendez whips it in from the left side, and Bello turns on that one pretty well. That's got a chance to stay fair, and it just goes foul. Great contact there by Bello, but it's 0-2. He's been a pleasant surprise. They've used a lot of different combinations involving third base. And I'm not sure we anticipated Alex Bello being the guy that they settled on, but they're getting close to doing that. Started off with another freshman, Dylan Buck, taking that role. He actually had the big hit that tied the game first meeting against Bethune Cookman, but that's a month ago in the season. And since that occurrence, it's really been more and more of Alex Bello in the last two weeks or so. Sullivan before him at third base. That ball's high, one and two. But Bello has assumed the hot corner with Sullivan. Taking over DH, DH duties. Mendez rears back, takes something off that one and two pitch. She takes something off at 69 with the radar gun. Bello barely chops it foul, one and two. Melendez, so far this season, has pitched in 12 games, started one, 19 in the third innings, at ERA just shy of eight, seven, nine, one. 11 strikeouts only in those 19 in the third innings and 15 walks pretty well in the recent series against Alabama A&M, but hasn't been on the hill since March 30th, so they're trying to get him back in there. Bellow fouls off his 1-2 delivery, still 1-2. and two. So yes, there are several common opponents between Bethune-Cookman and USF. Naturally, as always the case, being in the state of Florida, but you would not have pegged Wichita to be one of them. They went up there a few weekends ago. 
score many runs. Didn't win a game. Did Wildcats two and two. Melendez wastes that one outside. Nice little stretch before Wichita, where he pitched one and two-thirds scoreless innings, where he totaled seven innings in two frames. So he's starting to pick it up. Bellow skies that one high. Shortstop going back. Sterchevsky, center fielder coming in. It'll go to the shortstop for the first out. One away, bottom of the third inning. Back to the top of the order for the Bulls. And smart coach on the other side, fully realizing that a couple of dangerous lefties are near the top of the Bulls order. So surely another reason why the lefty is now pitching. Brian Melendez, 5'11", 170. Pretty much my dimensions. And Phillips looks at a ball, a curveball, and a dandy. And he just looks at it 0-1. Kyle Phillips. Counted out his first time up. And hits that ball on the line to right field, and it's fair. He's going to try for two. Phillips got that speed. Cut off pretty well out there by Torres, but not nearly in time to get Kyle Phillips, and a double with one out gets the Bulls going. Well, he definitely uses the whole field. That time he took an inside pitch and just pulled it into the right field corner. That's his seventh double. Phillips, when he gets into that zone, he's just hitting the ball on the line to right field. Doesn't use the opposite field very often, but can. And he is tremendous, and the Bulls love seeing him out there at second base. Now Jake Sullivan from the right-hand side. He walked his first time up. It's two for seven with the double in that series against UCF. The Bulls just continually hit the ball hard for those first two games, but they almost always got caught, finally got loose for a win on Sunday. Now looking to make it two in a row, creep back towards 500. Outside there on the fastball to Sullivan. Gutierrez is departing. I mentioned it. One of just, well, he's the only Californian on their roster. <laughs> I think I was right. I looked at their softball roster. I know the Bulls played. But then Cookman, that ball is fouled off one and one. Just, I think, remember, had a bunch of Bethune Cookman softball players being from California and cheered up. There's, there's a dozen of them. I don't get the connection. Kind of funny. A team that USF could see at one point in the postseason again this year. You know how the softball team is doing in just a little bit. Baseball team here is down one nothing, but has a tying run out at second base. And Kyle Phillips, who has doubled time called there by the home plate umpire. One and one. Now the entire field pretty much except for deep left and center in shade. Quickly, that happens. Fernando, the second baseman, runs behind Phillips, who saw that all too much activity for Melendez. He steps off the mound. One and one. Here it comes to Sullivan. Gets that ball well right through the middle. That is going to get Kyle Phillips around third. There's going to be a throw. It's going to get cut off. And an RBI single by Jake Sullivan evens it up at one apiece. Sullivan's been a find this year. That's his 11th run batted in. Came here as a catcher, playing just about everywhere else on the field this year but he's developed into a very consistent hitter. Absolutely hit that one where it was pitched, and the Bulls have hit a couple of balls hard up the middle that when it was Gutierrez out there got played, but that one wasn't going to get stopped. Sullivan, his 11th RBI, one of everybody on the top six in the order now in double figures in RBI. Chris Chatfield at nine. Gonzalez sitting on eight. This man, Jordan Santos. Sitting on 21, second on the team in that category. Looks at a ball low, 1-0. There's a curve ball that must have stayed high in the zone, 2-0. So Melendez came out there firing BBs and warm-ups, but it's taking something off here for the most part to the Bulls with Joe Jordan on deck. I expect that will continue. Now we're Jordan Sanders for the second time tonight. He's up 3-0 and in a bat. Singled his first time. After the count actually got worked full. That's when the Bulls put runners on the corners. But couldn't score with one away. They've got one in here, though. Jordan Santos looks at a fastball in the outside corner. Melendez is 
current whip is over two, so Bulls have continued that by getting two runners on base here with one out. Santos three and one, looking to make it a third runner in a row getting on base, even if he has to walk to do it. Not gonna happen there. Another fastball in the outside corner for three and two. So the exact same pattern the first time Santos came up. Get ahead three and zero. Oh. Try to get the walk, and now maybe have to swing, which he did last time, for a single. Here's the pitch. Runner's going. Santos skies that one deep to right. Going back on it is Torres, and that is going to be out of here. Jordan Santos, who needs to walk when you can trot around the bases with a two-run homer? Fantastic stroke there, his third long ball of the year, and the Bulls take a 3-1 lead. Turned on that ball, and he drove it deep into the USF bullpen any further and would have hit the top of the batting cages there. That was, uh, and he actually showed some opposite field power in the weekend series against UCF. Almost took one that, again, was surprisingly close to being a home run, made it look easy there. Knew he was going to get a fastball, was more out over the plate than the previous two good pitches had been. And I think that is going to be a quick night for Melendez. I don't know if the right-hander in the bullpen <laughs> is ready. Well, if I you're guess ready or not. I was, was going to say, if you're Bethune-Cookman, he is ready enough. We'll tell you who the new pitcher is in just a minute. Bulls have taken a 3-1 lead here, still batting in the bottom of the third. This is baseball on the USF Radio Network, presented by Marathon. Florida Blue Centers around the state offer answers to your health insurance questions face-to-face. -face. Come in for a health assessment, talk with a nurse, or try a fitness class. It's the place to go for inspiration, motivation, and advice right in your neighborhood. Florida Blue is committed to helping people and communities achieve better health. Visit your local Florida Blue Center because better health starts here. For 35 years, Belkin has been creating products that simplify your life and empower you to fully leverage technology. Belkin's products include award-winning lines such as the Valet Charge Dock for Apple Watch and iPhone, Duratec cables, Rockstar Multiport solutions, Boost Up Charging solutions, and more including certified USB-C accessories and wireless charging docks. Belkin combines extensive research and development with more than three decades of experience to make sure you're covered no matter what the future holds. Belkin is a proud partner of USF Athletics. USF Baseball on the USF Radio Network, presented by Marathon. So as I said at the start of the inning, it was a little bit of a surprise to see Isaac Gutierrez pulled so quickly in a game that he was starting to get into a rhythm, and the Bulls say thank you very much. They put up three runs against Brian Melendez, a freshman, now another freshman, Joseph Strong, and he's 5'10", 205 pounds out of Gainesville so far this season. Strong, well, four appearances, and he's got a 17 and a half ERA. Seven and two thirds innings, 15 earned runs in those innings. So the comment that I made in the second, if the Bulls can get into the bullpen, it's not a bad thing, could be formulating here. Boy, that's not a line you see very often, is it? Opponents hitting 314 against him. <laughs> he's also walked six, but 15 earned runs in seven and two thirds. The ERA for the staff, Bethune Cookman, incidentally, 5-9. Anthony Maldonado is their all-conference pick, pitcher of the year pick, and has been giving them solid starts. He's 2-3, and three, though, just not getting enough run support when he's gone up against other teams' aces. His ERA is 3-3-8, three, three, by far their top starter, but, of course, a guy the Bulls would never see. Only the teams that go up against them on a three-game series would see Maldonado. He actually got a shutout his last time out, struck out 12 last Friday, but we'll be seeing him. See how Joseph Strong comes to Joe Ginordi here with one out in the bottom of the third inning. Off-speed pitch sweeps outside, 1-0. and oh. Remember Maldonado pitching against the Bulls in the NCAA tournament a couple of years ago. He is very legit. But again, that's the only circumstance the Bulls would probably see him in the NCAA tournament. Just outside with that pitch from Strong. Joe Janord ahead 2-0. Doesn't mind being in this particular spot. Looks at that ball low, though. 3-0. So he's from Gainesville High School. He said they're the Purple Hurricanes. Gave up eight runs in his first outing against FIU. Put your ERA in tough 
category, tough territory. Four pitch walk to Janord. And he's on base. The Wolves after Alex Bello popped out the start of the inning. The top four in the order have all reached. Phillips with a double. Sullivan with a great RBI single up the middle. Santos with a big two run blast to right. Now Joe Janord walks in front of Austin Pedrado. So, yeah, FIU, this kid's strongest first outing, gave up eight runs in the third of an inning, and then against Ohio State, gave up six runs in four innings. Pedrado fouls that one off. Did pitch pretty well against Boston College, did strong two innings. Saw his ERA drop 172 points. Give up eight in the third of an inning. I'll let you all do the math. It's pretty high. Runner at first base. Pedrado fouls that one off. <laughs> Look out in the USF <laughs> dugout. I think that's Garrett Zeck saying, come on, you got to make the play. <laughs> I think he might have made that play with his chest. Good to see Garrett Zeck get into the lineup tonight. And it's, it's no sure thing to get a spot in this order. If you're a corner infielder, a corner outfielder, I should say. Pedrado shoots that one to left field. Going to hang up, though. Oh, for an awkward catch, but made anyway by Van Hook, and there's two away. Basket catch, where he, I think, misjudged how deeply the ball was hit. Ended up getting to it. So the Bulls have three runs in here in the bottom of the third inning, and Tyler Dietrich will be tasked with continuing the frame. Pretty sharp looking BCU hat. Man's got a camera, obviously, probably taking some photos for the team. Several people here wearing the, well, the official color. I call I've always called it maroon. Tyler Dietrich looks at a ball low, 1-0. Dietrich his first time up. Grounded out to short. This time he looks at a fastball a little bit high and inside, 2-0. So I'll be going with the team to New Orleans. You can catch our games all weekend long. Radio and of course on USF Bulls Unlimited starting late on Friday night. That ball's hit pretty well deep to center field, but Aaron's going to have room back there at the deepest part of the park and makes the out, makes the catch for the final out. Well, the Bulls got it going here. Three runs in the inning on three hits, one runner left on base. Jim Lauk will take you through the middle innings and we hand over a lead to him. It's three to one Bulls. This is baseball on the USF Radio Network presented by Marathon. Yingli Traditional Lager, the beer for drinkers who know how to tap into their inner eagle and spread their wings. So prepare yourself for takeoff and let your night take flight. Liftoff. When your lips meet that cold, crisp amber lager, there's no looking back. So fly over the radar. Ready, Tonight's about the lager, and this lager is all about soaring higher. Yingli Traditional Lager, spread your wings. DJ Yingling in Pottsville, Pennsylvania. Please drink responsibly. For 35 years, Belkin has been creating products that simplify your life and empower you to fully leverage technology. Belkin's products include award-winning lines such as the Valet Charge Dock for Apple Watch and iPhone, Duratec cables, Rockstar Multiport solutions, Boost Up Charging solutions, and more including certified USB-C accessories and wireless charging docks. Belkin combines extensive research and development with more than three decades of experience to make sure you're covered no matter what the future holds. Belkin is a proud partner of USF Athletics. USF Baseball on the USF Radio Network, presented by Marathon. We go to the fourth inning, and the Bulls leading Bethune-Cookman 3-1. to one. Richie Cruz went the first three, and pretty effective for the Bulls. One run, three hits, a walk, four strikeouts. And he will be replaced in the fourth by right-hander Dylan Burns, coming off his best performance of the year, a relief appearance a couple of weeks ago a couple of days ago he is 0 and 2 6.57 era 24 and two-thirds innings 13 walks 16 strikeouts opponents hitting 272 against him and he will face hitters 5 6 and 7 for bethune cookman Derek burns gave the bulls a lift his last time out. i'm telling you it was something i listened back just cutting up some highlights for podcast and I, I actually said it when he get he walked the first too many face then gave up an RBI double and I said Billy Moles probably coming to get him from the game that was in his first inning 
His first three batters all reached base. Meanwhile, 90-something pitches later, he threw 97 pitches in relief of six innings. It was it was a bullpen saving performance and a very impressive one. He just got into this rhythm as the game went along and no surprise it revolved around throwing strikes. He was changing his pitch as well. He was throwing the ball well away from righties and then he would go up in the zone and get UCF to chase. So it was it was it was something to see. Three to one Bulls as we go to the fourth. Three runs, four hits, no errors for USF. One run, three hits, no errors for Bethune Cookman. Brandon Wilkes to lead it off. Wildcats third baseman. Fly ball to left his first time, 0 for 1. All the scoring coming in the third. Bethune Cookman with a run in the top of the inning. And the Bulls with a three run answer in the bottom of the inning. Wilkes, a right handed batter against the righty Burns. Lights are on here, just a little bit of sunshine left in right field, and everybody else in shadows. First pitch from Burns is high, ball one. Bulls on the road to New Orleans Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. We'll be home again next Tuesday night for a single game. Fastball up and in, one and one. And then kind of an unusual, for the time of the season, an unusually late non-conference weekend series against Citadel. And because of the Easter weekend, that's going to be a Thursday, Friday, Saturday series. That's the next three games set at home. Fouled back, and it's now two and one on Wilkes. Yeah, last year, they, every, of course, weekend, American Athletic Conference play starting last year as one team playing someone out of the conference or taking the weekend off. And that's what they did last year, so they're filling that with a chance to hopefully continue to get some wins. A lot of little scheduling quirks changed when Wichita State joined the league. There's a line drive base hit. This will be extra bases. Hits off the wall in left center field, and Wilkes is in with a stand-up double. That ball was tattooed. And Bethune Cookman has their leadoff man on at second. That carry, that hit halfway up the wall. Impressive job there by Wilkes. Again, he's been sort of jerked around between hitting and being a reliever. This year, they're letting him do both. Last year, he did not have any at bats. And you can't keep that guy out of the lineup. That's his seventh double of the season that ties him for the team lead for Bethune Cookman. And here comes Joseph Fernando, who is one for one. Four hits now for each team. Bottom of the second in Gainesville. No score between the Bulls and Gators. First pitch misses, 1-0. and oh. Strikeout throwers are doing their thing. Bulls managed a couple of pop-outs against Barnhill, which is almost like a victory in that. Beat off walk and Keen in the second. One ball, no strikes. Burns checks the runner, now comes to the plate and misses again, 2-0. Bulls at a 4.26 ERA on the season. They have had a number of injuries, including now we are told Connor Eason, who will not pitch again this year. Billy Mole out to talk to Burns here. So by our count, that means six pitchers that are now out for the year. Max Holmes, who we didn't see all season. Carson Ragsdale, who we didn't see all season. Graham Hoffman, who we saw a grand total of once. Eason, Ben Koff, and Kevin King. Yeah, I um, had a good talk with Koff yesterday. He, he's taking it in stride just, I think, for him because it's a different injury. He told me his whole career he had three different knee injuries. He had a, a sports hernia, which didn't sound like any fun to rehab from. And then this is the first arm injury. Conference on the mound breaks up. Two balls, no strikes on Fernando. With Wilkes at second, nobody out. Three to one Bulls in the top of the fourth.
It's sharply past Bello at third and into left field. Wilkes will be held at third, and runners on the corners with nobody out for Bethune-Cookman. This becomes an important in inning all of a sudden when the Bulls got that home run. Santos just had a feeling they might pile on with the four-pitch walk to Janor, and now it's a couple more hits away from being a tie game here. And good diving effort by both Bello and by Gonzalez to keep that from getting through. And the Bulls quickly get a left-hander up in the bullpen as Danny Rodriguez comes to the plate. He walked his first time up. Wilkes at third, Fernando at first. There is nobody out. Looks like Pat Dudek out there one up. Burns in relief of Richie Cruz, who went the first three. There's a swing and a miss. Runner goes, throw is in time at second base. Fernando cut down, trying to steal. Strong throw by Tyler Dietrich. There's one away. And what a play there. I thought Dietrich was actually going to fake the throw to avoid having the runner from third base score, but it was a great throw, and Santos is still uh, trying to shake off that because there was some contact made against his leg there. It was a very acrobatic tag. Well, Fernando is departing, and he left his helmet on the ground near second base. Now he's got to go back and get that. That's the first time all year that he's been caught stealing. That's impressive. He was nine for nine. Billy Mole wants to come out and talk with Jordan Santos and make sure he's okay. Trainer coming out too. Remember the Bulls are already down a middle infielder. J.D. Dutka has been out for quite a while. <laughs> Santos just tapped Billy Mole on the chest like I'm good. Billy Mole just gave him a fist pump. You got to love that. But, yeah, you're right. You, you forget because Santos has been so great about J.D. Ducca, who may be able to come back this year. So Wilkes is still on third, but there's one away, and the count is 0-1 on Rodriguez. You almost consider you know, seeding this run. If it's a ground ball, don't worry about it. Just get that second out. Swung on and missed 0-1. With that in mind, the infield is playing at normal depth here. No balls, one strike on Rodriguez. Another Billy Mole pre or mid count mound conference has worked so far before. That one's low, one ball, two strikes. could turn out to be a pretty darn big out and the Bulls ran into some outs on the base paths getting caught stealing anytime they had something going in game one against UCF and it feels great to be on the other end you can't take it for granted one two pitch from Burns is in the dirt blocked by Dietrich two and two umpires tonight Jeffrey Gosney behind the plate Matthew Schaefer at first and Christopher Tipton at third Two balls, two strikes on Rodriguez. One out, a runner at third for Bethune-Cookman. Rodriguez has driven in 13 this year, but only hitting 206. 2-2 two -two pitch is low, ball three. Started out so strong with this at bat, he's just wanting to keep it low. Get a ground ball if you can. Take your chances there instead of having something deep. But right now it's costing them some moments in the pitch count. Well, Rodriguez, seven in the order, eight and nine are under 200. There's a swing and a miss, strike three. Rodriguez is retired for out number two. First strikeout for Burns and the fifth strikeout of the night for Bulls pitching. Same location, but unable to hold off there with uh, two strikes against it was Rodriguez. Chase DeBonis grounded into a 6-4 fielder's choice to end the second his first time up. Two outs, Wilkes still at third, and the pitch is outside, 1-0. Oh. Three in New Orleans this weekend. Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Fastball low, 2-0. and oh. Softball will be in Orlando for three this weekend. And we will bring you the spring football game from Tampa on Saturday afternoon. 
2-0 pitch. Swung on and missed on a breaking ball, 2-1. and one. one event involving the spring game weekend I'm really looking forward to. Friday night, there is a football alumni gathering. Before you all get too excited, you cannot attend this unless you're divided before you're about to get them excited. This is incredible. 2-1 pitch, ground ball to short. We will continue that story next inning as Gonzalez throws out to bonus and Burns gets out of the inning. No runs, two hits, no errors, and one left on base. We played three and a half. Bulls lead at three to one on the USF Radio Network presented by Marathon. Hey, Bulls fans, when the Bulls win, you win with Papa John's Pizza. This season, get 50% off your regular menu price online order at papajohns.com the day after the Bulls win. Use online promo code USFWINS. Home run! Papa John's Pizza, the official pizza of USF Athletics. Online offer valid at participating locations. Better ingredients, better pizza. Yeah! PapaJohns.com. It takes five years to earn a master's degree. That's the same amount of, time, amount of time it takes to earn a journeyman's license with the IBEW. The International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers believe contractors rely on productivity. It's why we require five years in the classroom and on-the-job training to become an IBW Local 915 electrician. IBW, where passion plus skill locks arms with value. The time is now to hire IBW electricians. The time USF Baseball on the USF Radio Network, presented by Marathon. Bulls fans, when the Bulls win, you win with Papa John's Pizza. This season, get 50% off your regular menu price online order at papajohns.com the day after the Bulls win. Use online promo code USF wins. Papa John's Pizza, the official pizza of USF Athletics. Better ingredients, better pizza, papajohns.com. Three to one. Bulls leading as we go to the bottom of the fourth. And Chris Chatfield will lead it off. Hit the ball sharply, grounding out to the pitcher his last time up. So Friday night, football alumni event. And we've had some of these before, but we've never had one like this. Right now there are nearly 100 former players that are planning to be at this event on Friday night and some guys that I haven't seen since they played here. Pitch is down low, 1-0. and oh. We'll be doing a lot of video interviews and some things for USF Bulls Unlimited Friday night as well. High ball, too. And as Derek mentioned, that's not an event that's open to the public Friday night, but... About 99% of these guys are coming to the spring game on Saturday. Okay. So if you want to see them, come to the game Saturday afternoon. Pitch outside now quickly 3-0 and on Chatfield. Yeah, I was glancing over your shoulder at the list. It's going to be a good weekend for football fans. There's a strike 3-1. and one. Spring game, admission free, parking free, all sorts of things going on in and around the stadium. One o'clock Saturday, Corbett Stadium. There's ball four. Chatfield draws the walk. So Joseph Strong, the third pitcher of the night for Bethune Cookman, walks the first man he faces this inning. He retired both men he faced in the second with the exception of a walk to the first batter so he's now walked two and here's Nick Gonzalez who struck out looking his first time 0 for 1. There goes Chatfield pitch is low throw is late stolen base for Chatfield he's on second with nobody out. Nice jump there by Chatfield and it really uh acrobatic slide there like he couldn't wait to steal a base his third steal of the season and the count is 1-0 and on Gonzalez 3-1 to one Bulls here in the bottom of the fourth squares to bunt doesn't offer let's see if he went around he did not it's 2-0 and Bulls did not attempt to steal first time around against Fair. 
bottom of the third now in Gainesville. Still scoreless, Bulls and Gators. That's, that's saying something. I'm telling you, that's the number six team in the country they're playing. One ball, one strike. And I think time might have been called beforehand. With a dugout warning, I believe. Yeah. Yeah, the home plate umpire, Jeffrey Gosney, pointed toward the dugout, and he has changed the count from 1-1 one and one to 2-0. and oh. I like how he makes sure everyone sees the change. It's almost like he's putting on his, his signal as a, a driver on a car. Two, flashing it. Two, they changed it. And Gonzalez now steps back in, ready to go with the count in his favor. Two balls, no strikes. Chatfield on second, nobody out. Squares again, doesn't offer, and it's 3-0. and You mentioned all the things going on around the spring game. I think there's, there's a mountain conference. I think people are just going to be blown away and apparently don't eat any food on Friday at all the yep. whole day. <laughs> <laughs> and if you can't for some reason make it, I know you're going to be the ringleader of a very eventful broadcast because it's not always just about what's going on in the field. I think we've got... Our whole team, except for me, I'll be in New Orleans, of course, on that. So it's going to be fun. And if you can't hear it or see it originally, when, as it put, gets out there, we'll have plenty of replays on USF Bulls Unlimited. And we'll have Michael Kelly with us in the pregame. Charlie Strong, we did his halftime interview, recorded that earlier today. And I'm sure we'll have one or two of those former players as well. We'll have to kind of pick who we want to talk to. We're going to have a lot of choices. There's ball four. Gonzalez walks. And that is going to be it for Joseph Strong. He opens the fourth with back-to-back -back walks. And this is quickly the second visit of the inning. So they're going to make a change. We are in the bottom of the fourth with the Bulls leading 3-1 to one on the USF Radio Network presented by Marathon. A real bright future story from the Florida Lottery. Hi, my name is Sam. I work at event management at the University of South Florida. Because of Bright Futures, I was able to take this role at USF Athletics and focus on something that I'm more passionate about. Because I played soccer and baseball my whole life, now I get to see what really goes on behind the scenes of college athletics. I just want to take time to thank the Florida Lottery, giving students just like myself plenty of opportunities to do exactly what they want to do in college instead of having to stress where money's going to come from. View more success stories at flalottery.com slash brightfuture. It takes five years to earn a master's degree. That's the same amount of time it takes to earn a journeyman's license with the IBEW. The International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers believe contractors rely on productivity. It's why we require five years in the classroom and on-the-job training to become an IBEW Local 915 electrician. IBEW, where passion plus skill locks arms with value. The time is now to hire IBEW electricians. Ben Berggren will be the fourth pitcher of this game for Bethune-Cookman. He is a left-hander. Joseph Strong goes two-thirds of an inning. No runs, no hits, three walks, no strikeouts. He'll be responsible for the two men on base. Strong threw 19 pitches, just five for strikes. So now Berggren. And his line on the season, no wins, no losses, a 13.50 ERA. Pitching in his fourth game, he has thrown three and a third, allowed five runs, four hits. He has walked four, struck out three. Opponents hitting 3.08 against him. There's just not a lot of low ERA options anywhere on this Bethune-Cookman pitching staff but especially in the bullpen and especially in a non-conference game for them. If you're wondering, they should have their options last night. Again, just played Tuesday night against Stetson, and their starter actually was great until Stetson poked through for some runs in the eighth. He went seven, and then they had three different guys try to get one out each in the eighth inning when Stetson blew it open with seven runs. So they have a lot of guys available, if you're wondering there, but so far the Bulls have had success against anyone. Alex Bello to the plate now. Popped up to shortstop his first time, 0 for 1. Chatfield on second, Gonzalez on first. They both walked. And now Bello with still nobody out in the inning. 
Bello has driven in two. Freshman batting in the nine spot today. First pitch from Berggren is bunted in self-defense. They'll go to third and they'll get the force. Boy, that was a funny looking play. A fastball up and in. Bello had squared to bunt and with that ball zeroing in on his head, he got the bat on it and wound up bunting it too hard. Berggren popped off the mound, threw out Chatfield for out number one. Gonzalez to second. Bellows safe on a fielder's choice, one out. Yeah, it didn't work out the way the Bulls. Actually, what a great effort to get the bunt down, but as you say, it was such an awkward situation with the contact. He bunted it well too hard and worked out perfectly for the pitcher in that case. Kyle Phillips, one for two, doubled and scored a run his first time up. I'm just glad Bellow got the bat on the ball. Pitch outside, one and oh. If he had not, that ball might have gotten him in a bad spot. One ball, no strikes on Phillips. Bulls scored all three of their runs in the third. Trying to add to that here in the fourth with runners on first and second. A curveball breaks way outside, two and oh. The bonus had to come out of the crouch and run halfway to third base. To catch up <laughs> with that one. Two and zero. Oh. Are off. Let's see if Phillips get anything to hit here from the left-hander. The two zero oh pitch on the outside corner for a strike at 77 miles an hour. Yeah, that was getting two me over. One. That was getting me over his last time out. Wasn't that really what hurt them in the conference play sweep against NC Central? And he Walked three, gave up four in an inning and a third. It's been more than three weeks since he's pitched. 2 1. Runners bluff but stay, and the pitch is outside three and one. Bulls have already earned four walks off Bethune Cookman pitching, and now Phillips ahead three and one here. They could be on their way to a season nine in that category, just a guess. Bergren comes set. Here is the 3 1 to Phillips. Pop foul coming over our heads, and it's three and two. Boy, that one came in at 70 miles an hour. I haven't seen Berggren much over 80 on anything he has thrown so far. Three balls, two strikes to Phillips. Runners go, line drive, base hit right field. Gonzalez will score. Bello will pull in at third, and the Bulls lead four to one. Phillips with two hits. That's his 20th run batted in. That run will be charged to Strong, and that will close the book on him. And now Jake Sullivan, who is one for one, a walk, a single, an RBI. This could be a big inning for the Bulls. One out in it, but that was at that was at 74 miles an hour. Pitcher they're going up against just doesn't have a lot of career appearances and no success yet, so it's, it can happen on a midweek. Now it's up to the Bulls to take advantage. I don't know if he's thrown his best fastball yet, but seriously, I don't believe he's cracked 80 miles an hour yet. Runners at first and third, one out. There's a strike at the knees at 73 miles an hour, 0 and 1. Yeah, that's a, if you're Sullivan, you just got to let tip your cap on that one because that was too far inside to take a good whack at. If he gets anything over the middle, Sullivan's probably going to do with it what he did with that last hit right up the middle. No balls, one strike. Runners at first and third, one out. That's low, one and one. More bullpen activity in the Bethune-Cookman bullpen. They have already gone through four pitchers through three and one-third innings. 1-1. One, one. Pop foul back at the net. One ball, two strikes. Kind of hope that we get to see Joe Denord go up against this kid because it's a challenge for Denord. He's gotten better at it, holding off on off-speed pitches, but that's all he's going to see, and it's going to be an interesting battle if we get to see it. One ball, two strikes on Sullivan. That one rolled foul to the left. Bellow at third. Phillips at first. 
One across for the Bulls. They lead it four to one in the bottom of the fourth. One and two on Sullivan. Hit him. Got him in the leg, and the bases are loaded. Got plunked the other night as part of the Bulls' three-run rally in the other day, I should say, three-run rally in the second against UCF. He's getting good at it. Well, he's been hit a few times this year. That is the sixth time, in fact, and he is now the team leader. <laughs> Here's Jordan Santos. Got a great night going, two for two. Homer in a single. He scored a run. He has driven in two, and here comes another mound visit. And once again, the bullpen pitcher can't have thrown more than three or four pitches down there, but he gets the call. So we will see pitcher number five when we return. Four to one Bulls in the bottom of the fourth on the USF Radio Network presented by Marathon. Join us Saturday, April 13th for the USF football spring game on campus at Corbett Stadium. Touchdown, USF! Admission is free, parking is free. Come get your first look at the 2019 USF football team. As an office coordinator, I want to scare the heck out of the defense coordinator on every staff. It's the spring game, Saturday, April 13th, 1 p.m. at Corbett Stadium. Horns up! At Tampa Electric, we believe that conserving energy and saving money is something you should know about because knowledge is power. That's why we want you to know that with Tampa Electric's Energy Planner, you can control when and how electricity is being used in your home. It's a free, smart home automation program that lets you save energy and money. And that's just plain smart. To learn more and sign up for Energy Planner, visit tampaelectric.com save. Tampa Electric, more power to you. USF Baseball on the USF Radio Network, presented by Marathon. USF Health is the largest academic medical center in West Central Florida, a place where discoveries are made, the future generation of professionals are trained, and nearly 900 specialists come together. USF Health, making life better. Pitcher number five, right-hander Jordan Pinto making his 17th appearance. He is four and one, but he has a 5.06 ERA. He's worked 26 and two thirds innings. 20 walks, 19 strikeouts. Opponents hitting 255 against him. And he inherits a jam. Bases loaded one out. Jordan Santos at the plate. First pitch outside, 1-0. and So the Bethune-Cookman pitchers, Gutierrez for two, Melendez for one-third, Strong for two-thirds, Berggren for one-third, and now Pinto. One ball, no strikes. And yes, they do have a right-hander throw. And <laughs> here is a pop foul. Left side, that will be out of play. And it'll be 1-1 one and one on Santos. I go back to and stress my initial statement when I saw, what was it, Melendez way back in the, the second pitcher. Couldn't they have gotten another inning or so out of Gutierrez, but the Bulls will take it. No re-entry rule here. <laughs> one ball, one they strike. They'd take advantage if they could. The pitch to Santos, line foul into the net, one and two. 20 walks in 26 and two-thirds innings, but six of those were in one inning against NC Central. Well, they have walked a lot. That's part of their pitching difficulties, 165 walks in 292 innings, so that's about five and a half per game. One-two pitch. Change up stays Ooh. high, two and two. And that one looked pretty good. No mercy from the home plate umpire in this case. Four to one Bulls were in the bottom of the fourth. Bases loaded one away. Pinto taking a lot of time. Now he comes set. 2-2 two -two pitch. Fly ball hit pretty well toward right center field. Going back, going back, and that is 
out of here. Home run, second of the night for Jordan Santos, and this one's a grand slam. It's eight to one Bulls. That was always a possible slam. You weren't sure. Both the outfielders fooled us, thinking they might be able to grab it, but it just tucked over the wall, and man, what power. Jordan Santos has showed off here tonight. He had two all year. He's got two in two innings now. And the Bulls blow this thing open. It is eight to one. Two runs charged to Berggren and one to Pinto. Now Joe Genord, who's 0 for one, walked his last time up. So the Bulls have three extra base hits in this game. Janora to check swing and he went around. It's 0 and 1. Just double checking before I blurted it out. Yeah, that's uh, his first three hit game. Do it in style. There's a strike 0 and 2. And how about this? With six runs driven in tonight, he now has 27. That's only one off the team lead. Joe Janora's 28. That one bounces up there, one and two. That's a lot of RBI for a guy that is, for the most part, been batting leadoff all season long. <laughs> yeah, the number three hole might stick with Jordan Santos, you think? One, two pitch, hit sharply on the ground, base hit into center. So Janora joins the hit party. That is the seventh for the Bulls tonight. And it brings up Austin Bedrado, who is 0 for 2. He'll be the eighth man to bat in the inning. And there's still only one out. And then we could have another pitching change there, checking the bullpen. At some point, one of the Wildcats pitchers is going to have to stay in the game. The second baseman on that play, Fernando, was kind of late in reacting. They're so used to Janord pulling the ball, and that's an impressive shot for Janord. It surprised the second baseman. Padrado has grounded out, fly ball to left his last time, and he swings through the first pitch 0-1. Pinto throwing upper 70s, low 80s as well. I don't think I've ever seen a guy like Berggren come in. He threw 12 pitches and did not get out of the 70s on any of them. That one hits 84 from Pinto, but it's outside 1-1 one one to Padrado. Eight to one Bulls here in the fourth. Fly ball left field foul and that's gonna be out of play. And it'll be one and two on Bedrado. These two teams usually manage to play a game if not two or three every season. This is the 79th meeting between the Bulls and the Wildcats. Bulls lead 61 games to 17. Check swing, he holds up. They ask the umpire and Bedrado is running up. There's two down. So Bedrado called out on strikes. And that'll bring up Tyler Dietrich who is 0 for 2. Yeah, if you're going 0 for 2 in this game, you're like you say, want to get in on the party. Fly ball to center is last time. Bulls are 38 and nine all time in Tampa against the Wildcats. 22 and seven in Daytona. This one pop foul. No balls, one strike. They're one and one neutral. I can remember one of those games was the NCAA regional. And I want to say Tallahassee, maybe Gainesville a few years ago. Here's a long drive to left field by Dietrich. Going back, going back. That is off the base of the wall. Janord will be waved home. He will score. It's 9-1 to one Bulls. An RBI double for Dietrich, who narrowly missed another home run. Oh, I thought that was gone for sure. I think so did the left fielder because... Technically, he could have caught that ball, but he just sort of lost sight of it, hit the very bottom of the wall as it turned out. It fooled a lot of people, but Dietrich hitting the ball hard, continuing to hit the ball hard. Chris Chatfield started this inning with a walk and a stolen base. He was eventually forced out at third. So he becomes the 10th bull to bat in the inning. 
Two outs, a runner at second, and six across for the Bulls, and Chatfield swings and misses 0-1. I heard your voice start to race there because he had one of those swings. Fortunately for Bethune Cook when he didn't connect. Bulls have blown this thing open in the fourth. Left hander continues to throw. That one is low, one and one. You wonder if they might go to Noah Yeager, who's been so good at eating up innings out of the bullpen and just try to save everybody else at this point. I doubt that because he pitched on Sunday. If you're right, I mean, yeah, you could look at it the other way with some of the guys that haven't had a chance to pitch. Here's the 1-1. One, one. This ball is torched towards center deep, but it is going to be over the head, and that's gone. Justin Heron had no idea where that ball was. He was coming in while the ball was going out, and Chris Chatfield drives it over the center field wall to tack on two more for the Bulls. Yeah, Heron put out his hands. He might as well have been a blue Heron because he had no chance of catching that ball. And Chris Chatfield to straight away center. His fourth home run of the year, RBIs 10 and 11. The Bulls have scored eight in the inning. They now have five extra base hits, three home runs and two doubles. And here's Gonzalez, who walked and scored earlier in the inning. First pitch misses 1-0. and oh. Great to see Chatfield continue it. That's a big possible factor. Pop foul to the right out of play, 1-1. One and one. That ball looked great coming off the bat. And it was Heron in center field that really made us believe the ball wasn't going to get there. Once we realized Heron didn't know where it was, you could tell it was heading for home run territory. There's a swing and a miss by Gonzalez, and it's now one and two. I gotta say something else. Tight strike zone right now. One two pitch, swung on and fouled off. Usually you get the other effect in a game like this, but Bulls are gonna keep getting pitches to hit doing what you're supposed to do with them, but it's still great to see. And I'm telling you, you have to get in this mindset because that team they're playing this weekend can hit the daylights out of the ball. Inside, two and two. 11 runs on nine hits for the Bulls. They have six hits this inning. Two balls, two strikes on Gonzalez. Hit sharply on the ground, but right at the second baseman who bobbles, throws in the dirt, and a nice pick at first by the first baseman, Rodriguez, to retire Gonzalez, and the inning is over. But not before the Bulls score eight. They do it on six hits. There were no errors, and we go to inning number five with the Bulls leading 11-1 to one on the USF Radio Network, presented by Marathon. Fans love baseball and the food that goes along with it, like shareable appetizers, pizza, wings, burgers, and fries. Cisco lives at the heart of food and service as we are passionately committed to the success of every customer, supplier partner, community, and each one of our 65,000 associates. Follow our trucks to your next great meal. Cisco West Coast Florida is a proud partner of the USF Bulls. Go Bulls! Manly Man! Emily Motor Oil tips its hat to the Manly Man. Manly Man! You one time wrestled a bear for 50 bucks. Manly Man! You always order the Lumberjack breakfast. Manly Man! 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 And you know that nothing protects your engine better than Emily Elixir Full Synthetic Motor Oil. Family owned and Tampa Bay grown. A-M-A-L-I-E. Better than it has to be. Emily! Emily Motor Oil. Proud sponsor of USF Athletics. USF Baseball on the USF Radio Network, presented by Marathon. The Florida Lottery has contributed more than $33 billion to support education. Your ticket purchase helps Florida students have a brighter future. Follow Florida Lottery on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Last time Dylan Burns was on the mound, he had a nice two-run lead. He now comes back <laughs> with a 10-run lead. 11-1 USF as we go to the fifth. 
It'll be hitters 9-1 and 2 for Bethune Cookman, Khalil Smith, Justin Heron, and Brady Van Hook. And one thing you want to do if you're Dylan Burns right now is throw strikes. Amen. Did a good job in this first inning of relief after Cruz threw the first three innings. Khalil Smith struck out in his only at bat, 0 for 1. Line drive, base hit left field. There is the first hit of the season for Khalil Smith, and he's aboard with nobody out in the fifth. Here do have every intention of swinging at the first pitch he saw, so that's his nice start for his first start for a freshman. Here is Justin Heron, doubled and scored his last time. He's one for two. Now in the top of the fifth in Gainesville, and the Bulls and Gators are still scoreless. Fly ball hit pretty well toward right center field. Long run for Bedrado, and he gets there and makes a nice running catch on the warning track in deep right field. One down. Oh, that was a great running catch. And use that wall actually as his friend there instead of being surprised by it, knew the contact was coming and just bounced right off. Nice give in the wall out there in right field. And wow, that. Wildcats appear to be swinging at the first pitch regardless. Uh, we, we're going to vote for that, by the way, as broadcasters. Brady Van Hook, one for two, singled in a run his last time. And if you're Dylan Burns, you have allowed two hard-hit balls in this inning, and there's nothing wrong with that with a lead like this. Amen. Throwing strikes. That one is low. One ball, no strikes to Van Hook. One out. Smith at first, 11 to 1 Bulls in the top of the fifth. You mentioned getting into a, having to put up some runs mindset because of the team that USF plays this weekend, Tulane. I'll give you some of their numbers in a second. Burns with the 1 0 pitch just off the plate outside, 2 and 0. Here's another 22 and 11. They won their game last night, their midweek game, holding on at the end to edge southeastern Louisiana 15 to 14. They have four batters hitting 350 or better, seven with at least four homers, and Cody Hosey's hitting 410 with 17 homers. They can hit the ball. Two balls, no strikes, and that's outside 3 0. Oh. The game times for the series from Tulane. Friday, our airtime will be 7.15 for a 7.30 first pitch. Saturday, 2.45 airtime. And Sunday, 1.45 airtime. Those are all on USF Bulls Unlimited and AM 1040. There's ball four, so that's what we were talking about. Van Hook draws a walk, two on and one out. On the Saturday game on the USF Bulls Unlimited side, We'll finish football before we go to baseball, but the baseball game will be on in its entirety on AM 1040. Here is Nate Starajewski, the shortstop. He's 0 for 2. So runners on first and second with one out here in the top of the fifth. Bulls infield at double play depth. Burns checks the runner, comes to the plate, and misses low and outside, 1-0. and oh. Remember, he, he threw 97 pitches. That would have been on Friday night, so probably just a two-inning-at-a-time situation right now if you're USF, but you're right. Burns knows it. He gave himself a little extra pep talk after throwing that ball, seeing it get away from him. He's got to come back over the middle. One ball, no strikes on Starajewski. He is a senior, Lake Mineola High School in Claremont. Right-handed batter. That's outside 2-0. and oh. Mineola, former uh, USF volleyball player, Alex Mendoza. Her brother, Drew, still plays for FSU. Left-hander continues to throw in the Bulls' bullpen. Two balls, no strikes. There is a strike, fastball at the knees, two and one. A lot of the minor league teams in professional baseball have 
started their season since our last visit with you, and some bulls are off to good starts in the professional ranks. Number of bulls in AAA one step away from the majors. Fouled at the plate, and that gets a piece of Starajewski. It's two and two. Jimmy Herget, Triple A with the Reds. Austin Adams, Triple A with the Nationals. Kevin Quackenbush, Triple A with the Dodgers. And the fourth bowl Triple A level is our friend Tommy Eveld, hmm. who is pitching for New Orleans now in the Marlins chain at Triple A. So four bulls at that level. One is in double A. Kevin Merrill is in double A ball now in the Oakland chain. Moving up fast for him. And everybody else in high A or below. A lot of bulls in the minor leagues right now. Hopefully some of them break into the majors. Right now, Herget and Adams are the two guys in the minors that are on the 40 man for their teams. Here's a pop foul. To the right side, out of play. And it'll stay two and two on Starajewski. Got me looking up to see if uh, New Orleans is playing at home tomorrow night. They yeah, that's right. They changed their name from the Zephyrs the baby to the cakes. Baby Cakes, which yep. is okay with me. I, I know what I'm coming away from New Orleans with. Yeah, so but they're playing or not, some gear. Do you think you could sell a Zephyr T-shirt or a Baby <laughs> Cakes T-shirt? Because that's oh. what it's all about. <laughs> I want both, actually. Two balls, two strikes. Line drive into center field. Going to hang up for Phillips. Makes the catch, and there's two away. Starajewski hit it right on the screws, but Phillips coming in from center made the catch. I can tell you that New Orleans is not at home, but I've been to the stadium they're playing at, and it's beautiful. They're playing at Iowa, which is the Cubs, I think, and they, they're, they're, they, it's not like Wrigley Field, but it's in Des Moines, and it's you can tell that people love going to the game. Here is Over Torres. He has struck out twice. Yeah, I didn't think about the possibility of you seeing a minor league game there. Two on, two out in the fifth. Torres swings and misses, chases one out of the strike zone, 0 and 1. Still no score with the softball team. That is just major turn of events. They, it was 7-1 here early in the season. No quark. In the previous four meetings were all run rules in favor of the Gators. So the fact that she is doing what she's doing is very impressive bottom five. No balls. One strike on Torres. Fly ball right field toward the line. Bedrado with a long run, but he's going to get there. And he makes the catch and the inning is over. So Burns struggles with control momentarily but gets out of the inning. No runs, one hit, no errors, two left on base. We head to the bottom of the fifth. Bulls lead 11-1 to one on the USF Radio Network presented by Marathon. There's something out there for you and me And the American road is calling So what's it going to be? Hey, it's in America American spirit. Yingli traditional lager. The beer for drinkers who know how to tap into their inner eagle and spread their wings. So prepare yourself for takeoff and let your night take flight. Liftoff. When your lips meet that cold, crisp amber lager, there's no looking back. So fly over the radar. And tonight's about the lager. And this lager is all about soaring higher. Yingli traditional lager. Spread your wings. DJ Unions, Pottsville, Pennsylvania. Please drink responsibly. USF Baseball on the USF Radio Network, presented by Marathon. We've got a lot of defensive changes for Bethune Cookman. Looks like Brady Van Hook has moved from left field to first base. And a little hard to see the number, but I believe the new left fielder is Clarence Carter. Makes sense. He's come on to every game the Bulls have played against Bethune-Cookman the last couple of years. 
Alex Bello will lead it off. 0 for 2 with a run scored, reached on a fielder's choice his last time up. Pinto is still the pitcher, and he misses with the first one, 1 and 0. Bulls with 11 runs on 9 hits. Here is a pop foul coming back over our heads, and it's 1 and 1. Pinto allowed four runs on four hits in two-thirds of one inning. Gave up two home runs. Pop foul to the right. And it's one and two. Every bull has been on base except Austin Bedrado. And every bull has scored a run in this game except Pedrada. One and two to Bello. That's outside. Count evens. Two balls, two strikes. Imagine how exciting it's going to be when George Santos comes up. Wait, this game is going. He'll probably be this inning. 2-2 two -two pitch is high. Three and two if you're just joining us. Santos has hit two home runs and driven in six tonight. A two-run shot in the third, a grand slam in the fourth, and he also singled in the first. Here's a long drive by Bello. He ties into one in left field, and that ball is out of here. Alex Bello's first career home run. It's 12-1 to one Bulls. What a great reaction from the bench. This kid is just a little keg of dynamite, and he's become more of than just that little keg of dynamite. He's a solid hitter, and that's his first. And that is the Bulls' fourth home run of this game. It's the third allowed by Pinto. So Bello leads off the fifth with a solo home run, and now Kyle Phillips is two for three with two runs scored. Phillips singled and drove in a run his last time up. Fly ball left field shallow. Shortstop Starajewski near the line. Almost overran it, but he makes the catch one away. So Phillips retired. Bulls on their fourth time through the order as we play here in the fifth. Jake Sullivan now has been on base three times, walked, singled, hit by pitch. He's scored two runs, and he's driven in one. Just to reinforce the, the offense they'll be facing this weekend, the Bulls with those four homers tonight have 29 on the season. Uh, Tulane has 52, so we should, we should see some hitting this weekend. We're seeing it tonight. Here's a sharply hit ball into left field for Sullivan. He's got another hit. That's his second of the night. And he's aboard with one away, and here comes Santos. Three for three, two home runs, and six driven in. Bulls with three runs in the third, eight in the fourth, and one so far here in the fifth. And here's the amazing thing about Jordan Santos tonight. Remember his first two at-bats? He, he got ahead 3-0, and, oh, and he was completely trying to walk. He took the next two pitches both times. And he drives this one into center field, hit it well, but almost in his tracks, Heron makes the catch. Santos retired for the first time tonight, and there's two away. Now Joe Ginord, who is one for two with a walk. We were correct on the new left fielder. It is Clarence Carter with Van Hook moving from left field to first and Danny Rodriguez exiting the game. So here's Genord now officially one for two. And it seems to be first pitch swing mode, so anything close here could get exciting. Two outs, a runner at first. That ball is inside, one and oh. So Jordan Pinto now one and a third, five runs, six hits, three home runs allowed, four extra base hits allowed. Here's the 1-0. In the dirt, bounces up there, but it stayed in front of DeBonis, and it's now 2-0. 12-1 to one Bulls. Remember last week, a big midweek win, 15-4 over Florida Gulf Coast. 
Bulls are putting up similar numbers so far tonight. 2-0 pitch is high, ball three. Wildcats definitely don't want to repeat of the about 450-foot shot that Janor hit against him. He hasn't seen too much to hit tonight. And he's going to take a four-pitch walk there. So Sullivan moves up to second. Janord's walk totals continue to go up as well. That's his 20th second on the team. And it brings up Austin Bedrado, who struck out his last time. He's 0 for 3. And you know he wants to get it going, not just because of the nature of this game, but he was 0 for 13 in Orlando. So he's, uh, he's sliding right now. There's a line drive, but right at the shortstop. Starajewski makes the catch. Pedrado couldn't hit it much harder, but he's out and the inning is over. But Alex Bellows' first career home run adds another for the Bulls. We go to the sixth. It's 12 to 1 USF on the USF Radio Network, presented by Marathon. At Indeed, we understand that when it comes to hiring, it's important to have a large talent pool to choose from. But sometimes too many good options can be overwhelming. That's why Indeed doesn't just give you access to a large pool of job seekers. We also offer screener tools that let you instantly narrow down your search. Hone in on hiring with Indeed. Increase your visibility to great candidates with a free sponsored job upgrade on your first job posting at Indeed.com slash promo. The sponsored job upgrade is a $50 sponsored job credit. Users are charged once the credit is spent or it expires. Terms, conditions, and quality standards apply. Best tailgate? It's got to be burgers. And an ice cold Coke. Real football y pollo asado. Mac and cheese. You need a hot grill. And an ice cold Coke. Of course. Football and Coke. Come on. It's got to be Coke. Game day? Race day. Calls for Coke. You know it. It's tailgate 101. This is Charlie Strong. Not all fans agree on the best game day foods, but when it's served with an ice cold Coca-Cola, you know you've got yourself a winner. Coca-Cola. Taste the feeling. Grab one and go for it. USF Baseball on the USF Radio Network, presented by Marathon. Well, the Bulls making some changes as well. Dylan Buck has moved in to play first base. And the night is over for Dylan Burns. Burns, the second pitcher of the night following Richie Cruz, who went the first three. And another pretty good appearance for Burns coming out of the bullpen. Two innings, he did scatter three hits, but most importantly, no runs. One walk, one strikeout. 32 pitches, 17 for strikes. And now lefty Pat Dudekin will come in out of the USF bullpen. We saw Dudekin briefly in the midweek game last week. And I think he's not just catching the warm-ups. I think Cortez is going to stay in the game and replace Tyler Dietrich here. That would make sense, the freshman. Dudekin on the season, 0-1, a 10.80 ERA. He's worked five innings, allowed six runs, six hits, 11 walks, and three strikeouts. So Dudekin to pitch, Buck at first. The freshman Julio Cortez now catching. And everybody else appears to be in the same spot for the balls. It'll be Wilkes, Fernando, and then Rodriguez's spot, which should be Carter, third man up in the lineup. Wilkes doubled his last time. He's one for two. So Cruz for three, Burns for two, and now Dudekin with a huge lead here in the sixth. First pitch to Wilkes is outside, 1-0. and oh. This is a good spot for Dudekin to be in the game, like you say, with Burns in the last inning. Just throw strikes, and that's been Dudekin's major issue. Got a little bit of it back last last game. Remember after that visit by Billy Mole, after he walked the first man. 1-0 pitch. Swung on and missed one and one. Nice fastball at 88. Boy, the season is winding down, isn't it? All of a sudden, we're in mid April. Fast strike outside corner, one and two. There are only two conference series at home remaining Houston and Wichita State. 
also have that Citadel series and then a couple of non-conference games. 1-2 pitch. Breaking ball has popped up. See if it stays in play. Foul territory. Cortez chasing, but it is in the seats, and it's still 1-2. and two. Man with the toddler in his left hand fortunately got well out of the way of that one. It was great to see that hustle there because of this, especially Bella. You know, he just hit a home run. He could be cruising around out there, but he sprinted after that ball. He wants to help out his buddy Duke. One ball, two strikes. We're in the top of the sixth. The Bulls with four home runs, leading 12 to 1. 1 2 from Dudekin outside in the count even. Yeah, you're, uh, you're right about the season coming down. There's still plenty of weekend series there. We're still, I think, a month and a half away, and it's, it's high time the Bulls keep what they've got going here. Yeah, well, you've got a lot of travel coming up. 2-2 yeah. pitch, pop foul. Conference stops in Tulane this weekend, as we've talked about. Also Memphis and UConn. Got a road game at Florida. Got a road game at Florida Gulf Coast. You know, that Memphis series is going to be pretty important for the Bulls to win. Two balls, two strikes. Breaking ball is bounced foul to the left, and the count holds. Now the Bulls will be trying to improve on their conference record, two and seven at the moment. So every game in league play, in particular, just vitally important now. Fastball fouled back, so Wilkes battling Dudekin here. mentioned all the two lane bats have got a couple of pretty good pitchers as well. Roper's outstanding. Big strikeout numbers. Chase Koleski's been a good name for them. So although only one starter under five with an ERA is Roper, we could have some similar scores to this one. Another two two pitch on the way. Breaking ball again. Golf towards center pretty deep, but Phillips has room. Makes the catch and there's one away. That was a really good batter for Dudekin. A lot of two-pitch strikes, fought through some balls, fouled off, and finally got his man. Absolutely. Never gave up on the at-bat, and again, the Bulls are turning it over to their outfielders right now. And i got to mention Pedrado for, as I mentioned, he was 0 for 13 last weekend. 0 for 9, hit that ball hard last time. But he's made a couple of nice running catches, so he's doing his part out there as well. Here's Joseph Fernando. He's been on base twice, and he's going to make it three times. Sharp ball hit into right field, so he has three singles and three trips. And that will bring up, for the first time, Clarence Carter. He's playing left field now, and he's batting in the spot vacated by Danny Rodriguez, who started at first base. So Carter making his first plate appearance of the game. He's hitting 266 with no homers, 11 driven in, and he swings through the first one, 0 and 1. Fernando on at first. Remember, he was caught stealing in the fourth. He's 9 of 10 now on the season. As the freshman Cortez back there now behind the play. At the time, that was a big play. It just become 3 to 1 Bulls, but like the Thune Cookman had something going, Burns got out of the inning. Yeah, they had first and third, nobody out. Pitch is low, one ball, one strike. I say in 12 1, you stay put at first base. Fernando, incidentally, hitting B38 now. The hits in this game are deceptively close. The Bulls have 11. Bethune Cookman has 7. This one fouled back to the screen, 1 and 2. But the big story for the Bulls the extra base hits. Right. They have four home runs and two doubles in this game. It was like the ECU series. The hits, a couple of the games were close, but Pirates can hit 12 homers, grand slams particularly. 12 to 1, Bulls here in the sixth. The 1 2 curveball swung on and missed. Strike three, two down. This has been wonderful to see from Dudekin, and he's definitely got the arm. Upper 80s fastball, and you can see his off speed stuff when he's locating it. It's hard to hit. Sixth strikeout for Bulls pitching. Now Chase DeBonis. Now the 
going to pinch hit for DeBonis as well. Silas Grinstead, junior catcher. Inside ball one. This is one of those games, not only midweek, but one-sided where the old scorecard <laughs> can get a little ugly. Can't wait to take a picture of it when it's all said and done. Test of penmanship tonight. Fail that test every time. 1-0 pitch, swung on and fouled straight back, 1-1. One one. Mr. Grinstead does not appear on the stat sheet for Bethune-Cookman. I'll look you up. He's hitting 091. wonder if he's our famous guy whose number and name is missing on the list here. That pitch is outside. Two balls, one strike. I have met three for 33. That's our guy. So Grinstead batting for DeBonis here. Ahead in the count, two and one. Two outs in the inning. And this one fouled back. That hits off the facing of the press box, and it's two and two. First start of the season, he was two for four against FIU, so at the time he was hitting 333. Have you ever known another Grinstead in your life? I went to elementary school with Courtney Grinstead. Two balls, two strikes. I have no proper response for that. The pitch from Dudekin is low, three and two. <laughs> so the count has gone full on Mr. Grinstead. Two outs in the inning. Fernando at first. We're in the top of the sixth with the Bulls leading 12 to 1. Runner goes, pitch is low, and that's ball four, so two on with two out. And that'll bring up Khalil Smith, who got his first hit of the year his last time up, a solid single. He's one out of two on the day. Which is fifth walk of the season. Third walk given up by Bulls pitchers in this game. And Dudekin will now go to work on the number nine hitter. Bottom of the sixth in Gainesville, still scoreless between the Bulls and the Gators. Fastball clips the outside corner for a strike, 0 and 1. Runners at first and second, two away. No balls, one strike on Smith. Time called before Dudekin can deliver the 0 1. Wouldn't be surprised if Billy Ball starts to make some substitutions after this half inning. Fouled. Off the end of the bat, 0 and 2. Trying to think who else he could bring in. Jordan Thice, Garrett Zach. Brandon Tripp, if he's not going to pitch, which he may. Janord is out of the game. As is Dietrich, which means more than likely Sullivan's going to stay in the lineup somewhere because you risk being out of catchers otherwise if anything happened to Cortez. 0-2 pitch, breaking ball just missed low, 1-2. and two. Now we can say it, Georgina Court just gave up her first hit of the game. <laughs> Unbelievable performance out of the six. 1-2 pitch on the way, breaking ball again, and that's called strike three. The inning is over. Dudekin strikes out two and strands two, and we go to the bottom of the sixth. 12-1 USF on the USF Radio Network, presented by Marathon. Manly Man. Emily Motor Oil tips its hat to the Manly Man. Manly Man. You had a beard before it was cool, like in third grade. Manly Man. You get up before the sun because it's lazy and weak. Manly man, man, man. And you know that nothing protects your engine better than Emily Elixir Full Synthetic Motor Oil. Family owned and Tampa Bay grown. A-M-A-L-I-E. Better than it has to be. Emily. Emily Motor Oil, proud sponsor Manly of USF man, Athletics. Man, man. 
For 35 years, Belkin has been creating products that simplify your life and empower you to fully leverage technology. Belkin's products include award-winning lines such as the Valet Charge Dock for Apple Watch and iPhone, Duratec cables, Rockstar Multiport solutions, Boost Up Charging solutions, and more including certified USB-C accessories and wireless charging docks. Belkin combines extensive research and development with more than three decades of experience to make sure you're covered no matter what the future holds. Belkin is a proud partner of USF Athletics. USF Baseball on the USF Radio Network, presented by Marathon. Freshman Seth Lovell will be the new pitcher for Bethune-Cookman. Jonathan Pinto goes one and two-thirds, allows five runs on six hits, one walk, one strikeout. And he was taken over the wall three times by the Bulls. So now Lovell, who is the sixth pitcher of the evening, Two and two, a 6.75 ERA. He's made five starts. This is his fifth time out of the bullpen. And he will face Cortez, Chatfield, and Gonzalez. Cortez batting for the first time since replacing Tyler Dietrich. On the season, he's two out of four. Has two RBI, playing in his fourth game. He made one start earlier in the year, has come off the bench in every other game. I honestly thought that uh, TD, Tyler Dietrich, would maybe sit one game a series, but it's just not happening. He's hitting too well. Pitch outside, 1-0. and oh. We mentioned the Bulls had four home runs. They very nearly had five. Dietrich in his last at-bat hit one off the wall in left field and went for a double. That coming off the bat might have looked better than a couple of the home runs tonight. Oh, agreed. But just didn't get out of the ballpark. This ball hit pretty well towards center. Going back is Heron. Going back, going back, going back. And he makes the catch right in front of the 400 foot mark. Boy, Cortez gave that ball a long ride, one away. Oh man, I thought that was straight away center power there and it was, but right in front of that 400 sign, Aaron caught up to it. Man, he's getting a nice reception in the dugout as Cortez for that, for that great swing. Here's Chris Chatfield. He hit one over the center field fences last time up. He is one for two with a walk, a stolen base, two driven in. He swings and misses 0-1. And you know, with the bullpen struggling, they've given this kid a lot of action as a freshman. Called strike 0-2. Well, he is, as we mentioned, kind of moved back and forth between starting and relieving. He's now got five appearances out of the bullpen to go with his five starts. No balls, two strikes. On the ground towards short, Starajewski up and over and in time to retire Chatfield. And there's two outs in the Bulls' sixth. That'll bring up Nick Gonzalez. He is 0 for 2 with a walk and a run score. Bulls trying to get their 15th win of the season. And build a little momentum after winning game three of the series in Orlando against UCF. Here's a bouncing ball out towards short. Starajewski heading toward the bag at second. Throws across in time to retire Gonzalez. And for the first time since inning number two, the Bulls go out in order. We go to the seventh, 12 to one Bulls on the USF radio network presented by Marathon. A real bright future story from the Florida Lottery. Hi, my name is Sam. I work at event management at the University of South Florida. Because of Bright Futures, I was able to take this role at USF Athletics and focus on something that I'm more passionate about because I played soccer and baseball my whole life. Now I get to see what really goes on behind the scenes of college athletics. I just want to take time to thank the Florida Lottery, giving students just like myself plenty of opportunities to do exactly what they want to do in college instead of having to stress where money's going to come from. View more success stories at flalottery.com slash brightfuture. Hey, Bulls fans, when the Bulls win, you win with Papa John's Pizza. 
This season, get 50% off your regular menu price online order at PapaJohns.com the day after the Bulls win. Use online promo code USFWINS. All right! Papa John's Pizza, the official pizza of USF Athletics. Online offer valid at participating locations. Better ingredients, better pizza. Yeah! PapaJohns.com. USF Baseball on the USF Radio Network, presented by Marathon. Bulls fans save the date, May 18th, Raymond James Stadium, Bulls Fest 2019, the return of one of the most popular events of the year that will benefit the Selman Mentoring Institute. Join us for dinner, live entertainment, live and silent auctions, and a tribute to Leroy Selman. Bulls Fest 2019 will raise funds to help prepare USF student athletes for the world after college. It's presented by R.R. Simmons Construction May 18th at Raymond James Stadium. Pat Dudekin out for his second inning of work. And he will face the top of the order, Heron Van Hook and Starajewski. Florida has scored in Gainesville. It's one to nothing in the bottom of the sixth. First pitch is high to Heron. He is one for three, doubled and scored in the third. The old bunt hit, bunt, and then a sack fly for the Gators. There is a strike, one and one. Cruz for three, Burns for two, Dudekin working in his second inning. This will be, if this score holds, a scorer's decision on the win. There's a swing and a miss, one and two. Technically, it should not be Cruz since he didn't go five. And you would give it then to Burns, who pitched the fourth and the fifth, but sometimes they can make a judgment call. Pitch inside, two and two. I would imagine no Bulls pitcher will throw as many as three like Cruz did tonight, so that may put him in contention for the win as well. But we get ahead of ourselves. It's only the top of the seventh. Two balls, two strikes on Heron. And this one fouled off to the right. That's the thing at the end of the game. The Bulls won. Weissie went four, and then Yeager came on after he gave up a double and a fifth, or a home run fifth, and went four. And originally they gave the win to Wisely because he went for the lead, but it got changed. Line drive just over the glove of Santos into right field for a base hit. So Heron has a two-hit night. He's aboard to lead off the seventh. And Billy Moore, those coaches, you know, they, they wanted to make sure Jaeger got the appropriate credit because he came on and shut down the UCF Knights. And, again, that's a guy that I think it's going to go back to the normal pitching rotation for the Bulls this weekend. They joggled it around. Jaeger's that basically – 1B on Sunday for the Bulls right now. Here is Brady Van Hook. Swings and misses 0-1. He started the game in left field, now playing first base. And he's been on base twice, a single and a walk. Also a ground out, officially one for two with a steal and an RBI. And he takes another strike, 0-2. 31 pitches, 22 for strikes. It's wonderful to see. Balls, two strikes. Tried to tease him outside, now one and two. Well, a second good relief appearance in a row for Dylan Burns. That's encouraging. If Dudekin can get through this, that would be encouraging as well. Big curveball is fouled off to the left. And it'll stay one and two on Van Hook. I tell you, not only the strike throwing ability, but these curves that he's dropped in there, they've all been, that's, those are the pitches that have been getting, getting away from him early in the season, but they are right around the zone. Now the Bulls are going to need some more arms. Breaking ball again. Did he check his swing? He did not. He's out on strikes. Van Hook retired for out number one. Van Hook gives the second base umpire a little bit of a glare case, but you got to be a little bit more disciplined than that. In a close call situation, I think the calls are going to go for the pitchers right now. 
third strikeout for Dudekin. Here's Nate Starajewski, who's 0 for 3. Fly ball to center his last time. Found out today that Connor Eason is done for the season. Pitch high 1 and 0. So that brings the number of Bulls pitchers on the shelf for the year to 6. So guys like Dudekin and Burns are going to get their opportunities. This one popped foul, one and one, and it's starting to look like both of them are going to take advantage of it. I tell you who, of the six guys, looks like he could play. This is the guy who got hurt first, so it kind of makes sense. But Carson Ragsdale, he's got all of that gear off, all the braces off. He's not going to pitch anytime soon, but I'm telling you, as a pinch hitter late in the season, he could be an option. Here's the one one. Fastball high. Yeah, that's the. One of the issues with Ragsdale, I think they were penciling him in primarily as a pitcher, but he was the type of guy, and Graham Hoffman was too, for that matter, the kind of type of guy that could give you an at-bat if you needed it. Inside now 3-1 and one to Starajewski. He's basically talking about Ragsdale, shaped like you wouldn't believe. 6-7, I believe, right? Yeah. So, still many good years as a bullhead. Three balls, one strike on Starajewski, and there's a strike, count full. We're in the top of the seventh. There is one out. The Bulls have hit four home runs, and they lead 12-1. to one. Softball has gone to the top of the seventh, so the Bulls will have to score to keep it alive, trailing one to nothing. There's ball four outside, and Dudekin allows the walk. Third leading strikeout pitcher in the country, Kelly Barnhill, trying to finish off the Bulls. She has gone more than 100 pitches now, 105, struck out 10. So it just shows you how seriously the Gators treated that game as well, knowing they were going to get a battle from USF. And Georgina Cork shutting them down for the last day. Over Torres is 0 for 3. Runners at first and second, one away. The pitch is inside 1 and 0, and we see some. Stirring in the Bulls' bullpen now, a right-hander starting to get warm. One ball, no strikes on Torres. 225 hitter has struck out twice tonight, and he's now ahead 2-0. So starting to get away from Dudekin a little bit here, two on and one out in the seventh. Hit sharply on the ground into center field for a base hit. Heron's going to turn third. He'll score, and it is now a 12-2 game. For Torres, his 19th run batted in of the season. You don't let it become a handful type of inning. This is okay. You got to come across the plate. He got behind 2-0. and oh. Credit to Torres for knowing he got him in the cleanup spot for no bad reason. Brandon Wilkes now is one for three, had a double back in the fourth. Runners at first and second, one out and one in for the Wildcats. There's a strike at the knees, 0 and 1. Talk about what's coming up this weekend. Softball going to Orlando, baseball in New Orleans, all the football activities. I'm telling you, if you like tennis at all, that men's tennis team last home matches of this weekend, Friday, Sunday, against two really good teams. That one misses one and one You spent some time with them today, correct? Ashley Fisher, the head coach, kind of explained why this part of the schedule has three weeks between matches and set up what's really going to be intense this weekend. Check that out tomorrow morning on Bulls Unlimited. 1-1 one, one pitch. Popped up, foul territory right side. Buck will chase, but it'll be out of play. And it'll now be one ball, two strikes on Wilkes. Bethune-Cookman coming in with a 13-20 and 20 record. They're 6-6 six and six in their conference. One ball, two strikes to Wilkes. One out in the inning. Dudekin up around 50 pitches now. Here's a slow bouncer towards short. Gonzalez only play will be to first. He gets Wilkes for out number two. 
Nice play by the freshman there, knowing that, hey, the runners are going to advance. That's okay. The outs are the most important thing right now, wherever you can. So Starajewski at third, Torres at second, two away. And Joseph Fernando, who's a perfect three for three, singles in the second, fourth, and sixth. Two outs, runners on second and third. And that pitch is low, 1-0. and oh. yeah, softball, just, softball just lost 1 to nothing, but that really does bode well. If by chance, and there's always a chance, USF gets put into a regional with the Gators again, they've got confidence now. More often than not, they have. Yes. Here's a pop foul to the right out of play, 1-1. One and one. So to set the stage for that three-game series in Orlando this weekend for softball, USF, UCF, and Tulsa all tied for first in the conference at 7-2. Bulls would lose a tiebreaker to Tulsa. That pitch is high. But three against UCF will be crucial. Two balls, one strike on Fernando. There's separation between those three teams and everybody else. Everyone else is below 500 in conference. 2-1 pitch. Swung on and missed on a changeup. 2-2. Two two. Wow, repeating the fastball delivery there. That was fantastic. Two balls, two strikes on Fernando. This is the best hitter right now. Runners at second and third. Two away. Bulls leading 12-2 here in the seventh. Two pitch on the way. Bouncing ball out towards second. Should get the balls out of it. Santos throws to Buck, and the inning is over. One run, two hits, no errors, and two left on base. We head to the bottom of the seventh. Bulls lead at 12-2 to two on the USF Radio Network, presented by Marathon. Hey, Bulls fans, Ron Diaz here. And if you need to sell your home for the most money in the fastest time frame, the only the only names you need to remember are the Duncan Duo at Remax, proud partners of USF. The Duncan Duo can give you an instant cash offer for your home or guarantee to sell your home in 29 days or they will buy it. Trust the agents that have thousands of five-star reviews and have sold over $1 billion worth of real estate. Go to DuncanDuo.com or call or text 813-359-89. 90 today. Join us Saturday, April 13th for the USF football spring game on campus at Corbett Stadium. Touchdown USF! Admission is free, parking is free. Come get your first look at the 2019 USF football team. As an offense coordinator, I want to scare the heck out of the defense coordinator on every staff. It's the spring game, Saturday, April 13th, 1 p.m. at Corbett Stadium. Horns up! USF Baseball on the USF Radio Network, presented by Marathon. 12-2 Bulls as we go to the bottom of the seventh. It'll be Alex Bello, Kyle Phillips, and Jake Sullivan. And they will face Seth Lavelle, who is beginning his second inning of work. Sixth pitcher of the night for Bethune-Cookman. Nobody is throwing in the Bethune-Cookman bullpen, but four guys are sitting down there. They have a bench that's kind of facing us. That's a little unusual to have them sitting where they're sitting. It's almost to say we're not throwing anybody right now, but we got guys if we need them. <laughs> First pitch to Bello is a strike. It, it looks like if someone could just give them a couple things to make a little fire. Marshmallows, some sticks that have a good old time out there. Fellow fouls one off to the right, and it's quickly 0-2. He has popped up, was safe on a fielder's choice, and scored a run, and then in his last at-bat leading off the fifth, he hit a home run over the left field wall. His first career home run, his third RBI. Fouls this one off to the left side. That'll wind up near the on-deck circle on the Bethune-Cookman side. And it'll stay no balls and two strikes. Fastball outside, one and two. Bulls on the way to New Orleans tomorrow. Game's Friday night. 
Saturday afternoon and Sunday afternoon. There's a swing and a miss, and Bello is retired for out number one. That is four in a row, retired by Lavelle, and it'll bring up Kyle Phillips, who's two for four. Double and a single, he scored two runs and knocked in one. Bethune-Cookman, leaving a couple more men on in the last inning, has now stranded 10, at least one in every inning except the first. There's a strike to Phillips, 0-1. Phillips average up to 326 now with his two hit night. No balls, one strike. Off the hands, back to the box. Gloved by Lavelle. The throw across is in time. And there's two away. That'll bring up Jake Sullivan. He's had a good night. He's been on base four times, two singles, a hit by pitch, and a walk. He scored two runs and driven in one. And we'll have a pinch hitter now as Brandon Schrepp will get an at-bat. So Sullivan's night is done. A perfect two for two and on base four times, and now Schrepp to hit with two outs and the bases empty. If he gets on, Garrett Zeck has a bat in the on-deck circle. First pitch to Shrepp is a ball. He's hitting 196, one homer, and six driven in. Two outs, base is empty. And a strike on the outside corner, one and one. So I'm going to guess that and there's a pitch low, two and one. It'll be interesting if they do bat Zek. He's batting in Janord's spot. Of course, Janord was lifted for Buck. If they lift Buck, we'll have to see who plays first. This bounced foul, now two and two. Unless they are fiddling with the DH spot, which had been Jake Sullivan. Possible that Schrepp is just pinch hitting. Buck would go to DH or maybe even Zek. But we'll only find out this inning if Brandon Schreff can reach base. The 2-2 pitch. Breaking ball swung on and missed strike three. And that's it for the Bulls in the seventh. They go in the order. Derek will take over for the eighth with the Bulls comfortably ahead 12-2 on the USF Radio Network presented by Marathon. Manly Man. Emily Motor Oil tips its hat to the Manly Man. Manly Man. You one time wrestled a bear for 50 bucks. Manly man. You always order the lumberjack breakfast. Manly man, man, man. And you know that nothing protects your engine better than Emily Elixir Full Synthetic Motor Oil. Family owned and Tampa Bay grown. A-M-A-L-I-E. Better than it has to be. Emily. Emily Motor Oil. Proud sponsor Manly of man, USF man, Athletics. Man. Best tailgate? It's got to be burgers. And an ice cold Coke. Real football y pollo asado. Mac and cheese. You need a hot grill and an ice cold Coke. Of course. Football and Coke, come on. It's got to be Coke. Game day? Race day. Calls for Coke. You know it. It's tailgate 101. This is Charlie Strong. Not all fans agree on the best game day foods, but when it's served with an ice cold Coca-Cola, you know you've got yourself a winner. Coca-Cola. Taste the feeling. Grab one and go for it. USF Baseball on the USF Radio Network, presented by Marathon. Fun when you can empty your rosters. The Bulls are doing as much as you can in baseball anyway here tonight. We start off the eighth inning with the Bulls on top of Bethune-Cookman, 12-2. And the new pitcher in for the Bulls is Matt Marini. They got two very encouraging innings from Pat Dudekin. Richie Cruz, three to start it off. Gave up one run, Dylan Burns two scoreless innings, and then Pat Dunigan, the next two, gave up a run as well. All three Bulls pitchers tonight have given up three hits apiece. But of course, the Bulls have come through with plenty of offensive support in the form of four home runs, too, from Jordan Santos, who is no longer in the game. We'll sort of recap the changes for you here in a second, but Matt Marini comes in. Seven appearances, four and two-thirds innings. Walks have been his issue, six walks, so Kind of similar to last week, a blowout midweek game. Offense gets it going, and both Pat Dudekin and Matt Marini get a chance to come in and sort of get right. And 
Dudekin and Marini both did last week and look to do the same here today. So pinch hitting galore there in the bottom of the seventh. When I say galore, the Zek never actually happened, but he has come into the game. So Shrep for Sullivan, and that's a simple swap of Shrep becomes the DH. And Zek, even though it would have been Jordan Santos's spot in the lineup, is actually going to replace Kyle Phillips on the field, and Jordan Feist goes out there to play second base for Santos. So his incredible night is over for the Bulls. Two home runs in this game. So Phillips' spot in the order now is Garrett Zek. Sullivan's is Shrep. Santos is Vice. Janoris is Buck. And Dietrich is Cortez. So five changes for the Bulls. And Matt Marini's first pitch of the night is a fastball outside to Clarence Carter, himself the first substitute. For Bethune Cookman tonight, he struck out his first time up. Nice fastball in the outside corner there. So the defense. The outlook is Zach in center field with Phillips. His last of that becoming his last tonight. He had five ABs, a couple of hits. Ooh, a nice off speed pitch by Marini. Gets Carter out in front, one and two. Side of the infield is the same that started the game with Bellowings. Gonzalez, but now feist him for Santos at second and Buck, who previously replaced Janord at first base. Buck yet to get a chance to hit. We'll see that soon enough. That ball is sliced to right field. madrado has been making some good catches tonight, but that one's going to dump in front of him. So Clarence Corder gets a hit, his first of the night. Number eight spot in the order now for Bethune-Cookman Wildcats out of the MEAC. Looking to really kind of focus, I'm sure, on winning those conference games as much as they can. Kind of work their way into a chance where they could be dangerous at the VAC tournament. No illusions of anything else as far as trying to get into the NCAA tournament via a different method, just win the VAC. Something they did a couple years ago. So now it's Grinstead, Silas Grinstead, come on was the second replacement, came on as a catcher with a run around at first base, and he fouls that one off to the right, 0-2. So good to see Matt Marini continue to throw strikes here. We're instead walked his first time up. Stays at 091 on the season. Matt Marini delivers an 0-2 pitch to Spiced at second, could be two. Over to Gonzalez for one, he has to shuffle his feet and still makes the play for a double play. Jordan Feist, confident as you like as an infielder, so often comes in on as a defensive replacement. In fact, Feist has appeared now in 13 games, just getting one start, so it shows you how much they love to bring him in defensively. And he started that double play confidently, and that's a big boost for Matt Marini, and there are two away. Bottom of the order. This is something worth keeping an eye on that ball's low. If you're following Bethune-Cookman's hopes, we never got word that Khalil Smith getting his first start. He does have a hit tonight. Struck out the other two times for Zach Spivey, one of their regulars who's not playing for the first time all season tonight. I checked the last game. It's 2-0 to see if he got replaced towards the end. Did not happen, so maybe just a coach's decision to gear him up for the last part of the season. Marini fires it in. 85, wanted that call in the inside corner, didn't get it, 3-0. Oh. Bulls, looking like they're going to win their second straight, get to 15-16. and 16. Of course, they'll have to take the series in New Orleans this weekend to get back to 500, something they're going to have to get used to the concept of, and that is winning series, trying to turn this season back around. They were 12-7 and seven at one time, but... We all know what happened against Cincinnati. Looked like they were headed to a series victory. Didn't happen, and they've sort of been digging out of a hole ever since. Tim Cookman's in a much bigger hole in this game. It's 12 to 2 despite the walk to Smith at the top of the order. And that's a good pitch to start it off to Justin Heron. Does have a double and a run scored in this game. Kind of got them going in the third inning against Richie Cruz. The Bulls answer with a three spot. Big eight spot in the fourth inning. That's why we're sitting on 12 to 2. 
loads of home runs. A grand slam by Jordan Santos in that big inning. Curve ball a little bit low. Marini one and one. Mentioned the tennis team. They'll be at home against Memphis uh, Friday afternoon. Then UCF to finish the regular season. Oh, good pitch off speed. Aaron well out in front, one and two. And if you at all, like I say, appreciate good tennis, that match on Sunday would be the one. Roberto Barroso Campos, USF's number one player, top 20 ranked player. UCF's number one is the second highest ranked player in the American. That is just going to be a battle. They could charge admission, but they won't, which is cool. One and two, two outs. Up to the eighth, and he tries to get Aaron chasing a similar curveball, but it bounces in two and two. So Bethune Cookman will head to play uh, what for them is for many reasons a big series this weekend in Tallahassee. Going up against FAMU. Two and two. Oh, another dandy of a curveball. And Marini's feeling good about life right now. He's got that pitch working. And with the help of a double play ball and a nice strikeout to end the inning. No damage done by the Wildcats in the top of the eighth. We head to the bottom half, the Bulls leading at 12 to two. This is baseball, the USF Radio Network presented by Marathon. A real bright future story from the Florida Lottery. Hi, my name is Sam. I work at event management at the University of South Florida. Because of Bright Futures, I was able to take this role at USF Athletics and focus on something that I'm more passionate about because I played soccer and baseball my whole life. Now I get to see what really goes on behind the scenes of college athletics. I just want to take time to thank the Florida Lottery, giving students just like myself plenty of opportunities to do exactly what they want to do in college instead of having to stress where money's going to come from. View more success stories at flalottery.com slash bright future. USF Health is the largest academic medical center in West Central Florida. A place where discoveries are made. The future generation of professionals are trained. And nearly 900 specialists come together because of you. USF Health making life better. USF Baseball on the USF Radio Network, presented by Marathon. Looking good tonight, the Bulls. You know, Jim Lauk mentioned it before, misleading as far as the hit, hit, hit totals because the Bulls have 11 to just, to 10 for Bethune Cookman, but four of them have gone over the wall, two from Jordan Santos. One from Chris Chadfield and one from Alex Bello. It has been a fun night. Kind of a surprising pitching move here. I'm sure there's a purpose behind it, and that is going with the guy has started every time out this year in the last inning. Tyler Cruel will pitch now for Bethune Cookman. And of course, he becomes their the, I lost count. Pitcher of the night. Seven. Seven. Thanks for counting, Jim. It has not been the easiest task. I guess, you know, I thought Lovell was looking strong there in that last inning. He struck out a pair and only thrown 19 pitches in two innings. But He's been the best of the bunch for them so far by a wide margin. By a very wide margin. So they're going to give Cruel an appearance out of the pen here, which is unusual. I knew I'd say something like Cruel and unusual in the same sense. Garrett Zek swings and misses at an off-speed pitch, getting into the game for the first time in the spot. Outfield of Kyle Phillips. Garrett Zek never got to pinch hit, which would have been for Santos, but he comes into the game defensively for Phillips, and he gets behind 0-2. Cool displaying a fantastic curveball. 0-4. Maybe that would explain it. He's getting shot out of the pen here, but boy, he three up, three down as far as pitches go on Garrett Zek there with the curveball, and there's quickly one away. Zek could not hold up on that one. So now, it is Dylan Buck getting a chance to hit tonight. Freshman who started off the season in the lineup. A big early season home run. Remember that first game? He and Nick Gonzalez both homered. Since Jake Sullivan and Alex Bell have got most of the play at third base, Cool tries a fastball, ends up behind Buck. Good catch there. Instead, didn't have to flag that one down, but did. Reaching behind the batter. One's over the heart and tap. 
weakly. It's going to be a tough play for Krul. He makes it, and he makes it well. A tough throw. Field it over there by Van Hook, and there's two away. So Krul, whatever the reasons for him coming into the game for his first non-start of the season, he has taken advantage of it. And now a guy who really liked to get on track here is Austin Pedrado. Not a hit tonight, 0 for 4. Hit the ball on the nose his last time, though. Big time. Big time to short. Smashed it and it played pretty well. In fact, they're going to shift over in that direction right now, looking at the shortstop. Staroshevsky kind of into the spot where Pedrado put that last ball that he flagged down right above the grass. Ooh, ooh a nice curveball that Pedrado just looks at. Last time out for Cool was just this past weekend against Savannah State. He did struggle. Gave up seven runs. That was the game that they managed to win 10 to 9. So, if anything, a chance to get his confidence back here. It's 1 and 1, tries another curveball, but gets inside of the draw Incidentally, in that game where they won 10 to 9, they won the first game 13 0, 8 to 5, and then they were down by three going into their last at bat against Savannah State, four in the inning to win. That's outside 2 and 1. Fernando tied it with a home run. But it was still tied. They didn't have anybody on base. They got a, a walk, hit by pitch, a single, and then Heron had the four-pitch walk to win it. So that's how these guys came. Oh, that ball's hit pretty well by Vedrado again. But right to the center fielder who backs up just a few paces to grab it. So Vedrado's 0 for 9 continues, but he's starting to hit the ball well, and the Bulls just have one more inning to finish off what would be a pretty convincing victory. As we head to the ninth, with a score 12 to 2. This is Baseball on the USF Radio Network presented by Marathon. Hello, I'm attorney Robert Rubenstein, and this is Rubenstein's Rules for Personal Injury. Rule number eight, demand the best service. You're entitled to it. Rubenstein Law cares about you. Our team is dedicated to providing the best legal experience during this difficult period. Cases do take time to get you the result you deserve, but we work diligently on those cases. Keep in touch with you and return your phone calls as quickly as possible. Call Rubenstein Law at 1-800-FL-LEGAL. Offices in Tampa and throughout Florida. Are you planning your next corporate events and looking for creative ways to engage people in a fun way? Matchup Promotions can help. Matchup Promotions is the leader in a full-service brand engagement and promotional products. We work diligently to help our clients create meaningful, memorable, and lasting brand connections with their most desired audience that last a lifetime. Contact us at 407-998-4227 or gomatchup.com. Matchup Beyond Branded. USF Baseball on the USF Radio Network, presented by Marathon. Well, a guy that kind of showed us closer stuff the last time he was play, pitching in a midweek game, Brandon Shrepp. Of course, it's not anything close to being a safe situation, but the guy they're going to bring on to try and close out the game here. And he, again, been a guy that started off some outfield, a lot of DH, but has transformed into mostly a relief pitcher, and he has provided just that. He's only pitched four innings, but they've been in times where they've needed him to just throw strikes, and he has. Five appearances, four innings, just one run allowed. And that's a 2 2 5 ERA. Two walks in those four innings, five strikeouts. There's a respectable fastball. Got it up to 92 last time out. Dropping an off speed pitch as well. And it's always funny to see the other team sort of size up a pitcher that they might not have game planned for. And that's what Bethune Cookman's on the top step doing. Flashback to Sunday when, remember, Nelson Alvarez, the Bulls closer, but UCF had never seen him in person. When he was warming up, you could actually see the look on the UCF's coach's faces like, yeah, it's going to be tough. So that was the last time the Bulls won Sunday, and they're about to look like they're making two in a row here. Head to, to New Orleans tomorrow. Brandon Trepp will go up against Brady Van Hook, number two hitter today. One for three, a single, RBI single, and a walk. Shrepp, look at that fastball low in the zone. Really like to see Shrepp have a good inning here because that would make the Bulls pretty much five for five in terms of pitchers. And it's not always been completely smooth sailing, but when you get that eight run fourth inning for an 11-1 lead, you can have some sort of choppy waters. And from 
most part, the Bulls kept it pretty calm. Now Shrepp falls behind 2-0. Oh, comes back with a fastball right down the heart. 87. Just thinking about the trip to Tulane. It'll be interesting. 2-1. and one. And that's another fastball. It moves it on the inside portion of the plate. 2-2. Two and two. The Bulls' colors are green and gold, but we're wearing green at Tulane. That's kind of their thing. Although they, they, they've thrown in that blue color a little bit more. Kind of strange with the green wave. That ball's a curveball. Tried to get him to chase. 3-2. and two. The Bulls play Tulane in football this year. They don't play in jerseys, which is unusual. 3-2. and two. Shrepp, leadoff man here in the ninth. Gets him to swing at a fastball. Fouls it off. 3-2. and two. Of course, it's a Small sample size, but Shrepp with an ERA at 2.25, and he's again a guy that has gone from almost being a novelty. Hey, let's give him a shot. It was that game against Jacksonville. It's a, a solid option. Good eye there, though, by Van Hook, and he will walk for the second time tonight. Good time through the order. Here go the Wildcats. They do have 10 hits. And now Nate Staszewski comes up. Hitting 316 on the season. Without a hit, though, however, tonight. Well, Goodman has gotten some runners on base. They've left 11 on. Now Shrepp out of the stretch. Still got some power behind that fastball. Right down the heart, I wouldn't want. At some point in this game, the Finn Goodman went from swinging at every first pitch once they fell behind big to trying to work blocks. So the pace of this game has kind of fluctuated as a result. One and one. Crushed a lot of balls to the outfield. That would be the fifth. So Drawed him in a couple nice catches. Phillips grabbed one at the ball. And that's kind of when you knew this game was in hand for the Bulls. One and one. Oh, almost hit him with that ball. Reared back with a fastball. Sailed inside. So most of the Bulls teams are on the road this weekend, but football with the spring game, tennis with Friday, and Sunday matches. Rep, two and one, high in the zone, and that's really the first time. And I, I like the decision there by the home plate umpire Jeff Gosney to call that high strike at this stage in the proceedings. Two and two. Even if, it, even if it was going the other direction, I'd say the same thing. And that ball is a heater right down the heart. Swung on a miss. Strike three. Staroshevsky let that last one go. That was about the same spot. He took a hack at it. Strikeout number one for Brandon Trepp. Guy hit the ball well last time for an RBI single, but just one of two RBI hits tonight for the Wildcats. Over Torres comes up there from the right hand side. Out of Miami. Shrepp tried the curveball, but it is well inside. As you might have imagined, most of the Thune Cookman players are from the Florida area and the Daytona Beach area as well. Head coach Jonathan Hernandez trying to get things going there. And that could do the game. It's Gonzalez at short to vice for one, and the attempt at a double play really was kind of maybe optimistic there. The throw was bounced in, but they do get the lead runner. There are two away. Ball wasn't hit hard, and then Feist had a hard time getting it out of his glove on the transition. Throw came in to Buck low, got through him, but I'm not sure even if he had fielded it cleanly, they had the out. Big thing was they got the lead runner, and now they're only one out away. Yeah, I think Feist even knew that that was going to be a tough play to make, which might explain the throw being a little off, but no damage done whatsoever there. Two away. Now it's going to be Wilkes, and he looks at a curveball and a beauty from Trepp who gets ahead 0-1. Wilkes does have a double, and I mean, he ripped that ball midway up the wall, left center fourth inning. Curveball stays high that time. Looks just about the only bullpen home that we didn't see tonight. He's become a two-way player for Ben Cookman and has done a solid job in the number five spot in the offense. Leader in RBI incidentally. And he has a chance there, but Vice got a chance to grab it, and he does! Dives backwards! Defensive replacement, I'd say so! He ends the game with an amazing acrobatic catch. 
His reaction is very calm and cool, but you know he's excited. And the Bulls get the win. Celebration indeed. Three runs in the third inning, eight more in the fourth. That was about all of the scoring. Four home runs, too, by Jordan Santos. We'll wrap it up with our postgame show. The final score, USF 12, Bethune Cookman 2. This is baseball in the USF Radio Network, presented by Marathon. Best tailgate? It's got to be burgers. And an ice cold Coke. Real football y pollo asado. Mac and cheese. You need a hot grill. And an ice cold Coke. Of course. Football and Coke, come on. It's got to be Coke. Game day? Race day. Calls for Coke. You know it. It's tailgate 101. This is Charlie Strong. Not all fans agree on the best game day foods, but when it's served with an ice cold Coca-Cola, you know you've got yourself a winner. Coca-Cola. Taste the feeling. Grab one and go Bulls. When it comes to cancer, defense isn't always the right strategy. You have to be willing to go on the offensive to attack it relentlessly like Moffitt Cancer Center.